Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's lift up our hands and bless his name. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. Lift up your hands and worship him. Jesus, we lift up your name. Lift your voice and say, Jesus, we lift up your name. Shabala, balala, balala, balala. Worship him, lift your hands, coin on your let's honor the king. Jesus, we lift up your name. Do you be all Are you be God? preservation we thank you for your grace we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your faithfulness Lord we thank you you are dependable you are reliable way 
make a miracle walk from me your testimony to him. We make a miracle was keep a promise keep light in the darkness Hallelujah. Father, people call this year many names but the name you gave us, you demonstrated that it was so. We thank you. We thank you. For us as a family, we have seen your hand, we have seen your majesty. You have multiplied us, you have increased us. Thank you for your grace. That is who you are. 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 Lord, you crown our year with goodness and we thank you. We thank you. For those of you who what we are doing seems strange, this is the secret behind the finger of God. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him. There is no level of intellect. There is no level of wisdom. There is no level of human science that is capable to do this. Father, we are not ashamed. Be glorified. Be glorified. Joshua Selman is nothing without your wisdom. Absolutely. 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 Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you are true, dependable, reliable, faithful. We return thanks. We return thanks for sparing our lives, for triumphing over death, over sickness and infirmity, for turning the lives of people around. Thank you. Thank you for transforming millions around the world. Thank you for giving our teachings wings to move beyond the limitations of time. Thank you for the prevailing power of your word, for access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for wealth and prosperity. Thank you for the effectual walking of your grace. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. You see, our, our generation is a very arrogant generation. We are very embarrassed. Whenever the spotlight leaves us, whether it is to God or to any other person, we frown at it. There is such a crave in our generation for power, for honor, for recognition. So when times come like this, when we all become ushers to bow before the king, sometimes because of our little achievements here and there, we pride ourselves into believing that it was a product of our wisdom. But every wise man who knows God knows how weak a man is. When you see God's result, separate the man from the result. This 
is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. This is the finger of God. 45 nations of the world, this is the finger of God. Light in the darkness, that is who you are. Jesus, thank you. When you speak, it is within your power to make it happen. Forgive us for our unbelief. Forgive us for thinking you are a man. You are God, the creator of the ends of the earth. I wish I told you people to rehearse this song. Creator of the universe, what can you do? What can you do, Jesus? The name above every other name. to you just take your eyes away and with childlike foolishness say Lord I believe if God tells you I am lifting you on the wings of eagles say Lord I believe don't ask and say who is my uncle uh -uh. I believe I believe this ministry is a testimony of what God can do when he finds men who can dare to believe him Jesus we give you the praise in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's honor our worship team. Come on. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, guys, 
I am so proud of you, you do not imagine. I was talking to a Jimmy and said, look, very soon, we're going to start our own record label. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. And by the Spirit of God, it will bless the nations of the world. And you'll have the opportunity to go around the nations of the world and be a blessing to the body. In the name of Jesus. Let's honor them one more time. Thank you. Manasseh is with us today. Bless him. The bishop is around. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone. We'll be very brief tonight. We're going to pray. I want to start tonight. Um, I'm going to give us a very strong admonition which also doubles as an instruction so please be ready to write the lord put this in my heart to share with us it's been a wonderful year and god has been faithful but let me remind you that the year is not over like bishop david oyedeko will say he made the heavens and the earth in seven days i don't care whether it's prophetic seven days or real seven days my faith can agree on the one i want god to move on praise the lord whether it's a thousand years seven days i know that even if it is in one day it says as soon as zion travails she shall put forth a child you say have you ever heard this proverb that a woman will give birth in one day be pregnant in one day and give birth in one day that's god for you hallelujah i still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come i truly believe god has done things that I brought tears out of my eyes but I believe for myself that between now and December 31st I am yet to see the hand of God and so but I want to encourage us even as we begin to set the pace for 2018 if you will be there you can write <laughs> no gone are the days where people in, in a false show of humility, they said, we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie. Don't, don't let any man um, bring that nonsense around your table. No. You can believe. There are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life, the longevity of your life. And the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a few things that the Lord put in my heart to encourage us. Really, this is, this is what I'm here to do this night. And then a few other things that God will grant us grace to do. Now, most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat. Most Christians are not taught that a retreat is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer we teach fasting we teach prayer but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of god it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when satan gets at people when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you're moving it's difficult for satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have a workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from god when you are alone with him 
are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it retreats very important end of year retreats very important you must take out time end of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours that is laziness you didn't have a retreat you just had a quiet time a retreat should be at least minimum two solid days you can't spend one day one day alone should be dedicated to thanksgiving is god speaking to us so every single one of us and those following online we must take out time to have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of god's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank god mention them one by one let me tell you i know this about god he never gets tired hearing people thank him lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you last year it was without blue band you added blue band this year and so you observed it you see that not lord you thank you for the food you gave me that's a careless thanksgiving father thank you last year it was tap water now you gave me bottled water thank you that means you are careful you are forgetting not his benefits when it comes to requests we are very meticulous lord give me one two three four then when it comes to thanksgiving we say lord even me i can't remember are you not god don't you know everything I, I just thank you for everything let's go to another prayer request and god says how selfish selfish when you thank god mention things one by one lord thank you i was on my way to kaduna and the car wanted to capsize you saved me thank you and god said ah, this happened january say lord i didn't forget you are too faithful for me to forget that event he said you remember this for me get ready for another dimension thanksgiving write it down thanksgiving we must take out quality time to thank him number two i'm teaching you how to maximize to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year 2017 now that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and i'll dwell here a bit to help us understand i want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for god review the illumination of the word that you have accessed what do you know now that you did not know last year what do you understand now that you did not understand last year review your character create a scale for it can i say i am improving not just in the knowledge of god am i useful to society am i becoming a leader am i becoming a person of character so your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review let me tell you something about retreats you must be honest you see why you have to be alone excuse me you must be honest you must be unashamed you must be very sincere before god number two mental development and your capacity you review that area did i cooperate with the word of god to develop my mind did I acquire useful informations that will set me 
on the cutting edge of relevance did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die are we together now yes it matters that we not only grow spiritually but we sustain the ability to be useful we must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment so you review it what books did I read what do I know about leadership did I learn anything did I build my mind what do I know about mindsets am I still carrying my village in my head moving around with it am I still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure am I still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life is God helping us number three review how much you have taken care of your body your health in a retreat yes sir that's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when because the only person you really have offended is God this body belongs to him for some of us 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health wise is that true review oh this year lord i apologize i ate anyhow i did all kinds of things anyhow destroyed my body why do you make these reviews because you need this body to last very long are we together gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life and you see someone of 32 looking like 50 they ask him how old are you? He said, I will be 33 next year. Say, well, so why are you looking at his a condition make crayfish bed? No, you are not a crayfish. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. Some of those sayings, we must start getting them out of the body of Christ. They look very nice, but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty is carelessness write that word down this is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat many people's lives are destroyed including their health because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which God brought you review your purpose your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat Lord I look at the compass of my destiny did I make progress this year can I say from prophecy to manifestation I have moved forward you see this assignment and purpose thing you, you, you hardly even hear it again people don't talk about it it says lo I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will the reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose if purpose does not occupy you anybody can call you any day and say are you free sir yes come and follow me somewhere god designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment this idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent, um, I would say, trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward. Motions like sitting on a rocking chair. The chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress. Oftentimes Jesus would retreat and look, okay, I must be here, I must be there. Your assignment, your purpose. I don't know my purpose, but you can look at your service in the house of God. Use that as a template. What was your level of commitment? What was your level of diligence? Are we together? Very important. This is what I do during my retreats number four the fourth area number what number five i beg your pardon your finance write it down your finances 
you have to flog it out in the secret place are we together now you've looked at your spiritual life mental transformation your body your health is that true and then your assignment then your finances we are very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance i'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life i've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost it's not just bad it's a cost it's one of the most distracting strategies of satan when a man spends all your life looking for money it's a cost Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building? This chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of Satan, has made us to leave our purpose. There are people called as prophets and apostles, but they only realize one week to their death. They spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it. Please let me say it again and again. Do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything, money. You say Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake. I gave 100,000 Naira to 419ers. You don't jump that. What is the lesson that I have to learn there? Is that true? God gave me 200,000. I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 1010 10 Naira. I gave you offering of 2020 20 Naira. But my average dinner was 2000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. The amount does not matter. Are we not Bible students? He that soweth sparingly. What is sparingly? Small, scanty. Shall reap, but he shall reap scanty. That's why you get one testimony in four months. Correct? You are reaping. But he that soweth bountifully, lavishly, extravagantly, he said he will reap. The Bible said that scriptures cannot be broken. So don't say that it does not matter. It could be a time for you. I remember it was in one of my retreats, honestly speaking, that the Lord challenged me on this. The level of giving was far less than the level of God's blessing on my life. And the Lord rebuked me. And I made up my mind and I made a vow. There is a minimum amount I will never give as offering again forever till Jesus comes. Yes, it's true. 
it's true it's true so review it what do you understand about finances review it if all you know about finances is business and job is better you have to sit down and flog that area because neither of them in themselves will give you money number six relationships the sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships marital relationships career relationships business relationships destiny relationships some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations associations that should have nothing nothing to do with our lives is all this uh, is our tribe is our church is our this is that true the bible says he that works with the wise will be wise but it says the companion of fools will be destroyed relationships it matters review them review them who did you give access to this year whose presence destroyed your productivity who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life some of you your relationship here you even need to go back and check with the holy spirit what degree of access did you give him relationships now when you review these six areas let me be honest with you your entire life revolves around these six areas your spiritual life your mental development your health and physical well-being is that true your assignment your career whatever it is your financial resources and your relationships there is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area usually what i do is that i scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and i must answer why i won't just say i will improve why why was this the best and why was this the worst if your relationships for inside for instance was the worst this year what don't i know about friendship what have i not learned maybe i'm neglecting honor maybe i'm not valuable enough maybe i'm too much of a talkative maybe i'm not somebody who can be committed secret maybe i'm somebody who is not friendly maybe i'm someone who is jealous lord help me you write it down are you seeing how people grow in retreat you never come out of that experience the same no sir people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again and you see the bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin if your wine skin is old nothing new will ever come you will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion he said go and borrow vessels borrow the wine skin borrow not a few and the more the wine skin the more capacity for the anointing to function is that true you must take out time so this is the second thing you do the first thing let's review thanksgiving thanksgiving then the second thing you do is a review of the year i gave you six aspects of your review the third thing is that you must plan for 2018 plan for 2018 i'll tell you how to plan shortly please write this it's very important plan for 2018 it's amazing how many people don't plan they think just because they are writing what they would do they think that's planning that's not planning many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year less than one percent of them ever happen that's not a goal how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them i am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing god remember your success is based on your partnership 
you are not going to plan alone for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you must plan and add a scriptural backing that means a spiritual basis for committing God in those areas and then you must add time targets to them every day is not conducive for everything no sir when you buy a product if we pick up this bottle of water you will see there's a little inscription there the manufacturing date and then they write something best before in other words to get the best of this pro this product it should be consumed within this time range putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them the reason why i believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation so we make it look like every day is conducive no sir if you build a house at 70 years it's not a testimony if you finish school at 60 years it's not a testimony is that true if a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years it's an unusual testimony it's because it's not supposed to be so is that true if god blesses you at 80 years who are you going to leave it for you will be angry and be frustrated so there are things that we must trust god to help us fast track in our life say amen and let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little please plan turn to any brother seated near and say brother plan just leave the sisters in one minute say brother plan listen spiritual people spiritual people are some of the poorest planners we have especially in this country we don't plan for our greatness we just hope and wish and pray bishop oyedeko said praying without planning is playing without knowing you have to be like nehemiah with one hand you are building but with another hand you are holding the sword both hands cannot hold the sword one hand is holding the sword and another hand is building he says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all that some man must build the horse is prepared for battle but safety is of the lord but it does not stop you from preparing the horse are we together now i expect every gentleman here to start planning married or not sit down and plan here's what scripture says when i was a child i thought like a child correct i understood like a child i acted like a child he says now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things some of you that's what will happen in your retreat you have to sit down and tell yourself this childishness in my life must go forever comma this foolishness in my life must go forever this stupidity in my life must go forever somehow we have this belief that because god is able without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of god things will just happen just like that we are tired of irresponsible fathers we are tired of irresponsible gentlemen we are tired of nuisances to society a gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents blasting in tongues but depending there it should not be it should not be there is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life is that true i'm speaking to everybody but i'm speaking especially to our gentlemen please let's go back to god and plan this rat race of visiting everybody today you are here tomorrow you are there my brother what are you doing with your life you say it is well no it's not well you sit down and plan what are you doing with your life Oh, I want to marry Apostle Wonderful and eat what? Show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking, the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family. Especially, do you know, because in Africa, let's be very honest, if I handpick everybody here, almost everybody here has at least four or five people 
depending to eat from him is that true leave the ladies gentlemen i'm talking to you i'm coming to the ladies pick anybody at random there is one neighbor one one cousin you know one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed so gone are the days where you say i have enough for myself no you must flog it out plan 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 i will take the month of january to study only on finances even if they give you a message on rapture you say i'm born again i have a goal i'm studying on finances i'm spending the month of february to study on faith on faith i'm studying the month of uh, the month of march to study on the anointing I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith individually we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. We are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. All the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read. You glanced through let's use this break period to extensively study the book of proverbs go online there are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book study carefully don't read to finish read to understand the book of proverbs the lord put this in my heart while studying the fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again it's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year they will, I will I will have have to commit to something that cost me both to God and to the ministry every year without fail I do this I'm not talking of uh, 10 naira 20 naira something that even you you will stand and say Lord I give you thanks between you and God why are you doing that you are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation this has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money and this is a mistake that men of god make when it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice you see them expressing a lot of desperation i i always say this every man of god's success is not based on the giving of members it is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which you are complying with the precepts of the kingdom are we together these five things i promise you that when you do them you will be ready for an amazing 2018 number one thanksgiving number two review 
that number two for me is one of the most important you have to review don't just wait and say ah apostle send us the prophetic word for next year my body is shaking i need to know what is the prophetic word this is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again and and and, and then again and again and they find out that the year remains the same different words coming but there's no progress in our lives so go back get a notebook don't just get a little piece of paper it's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny get a notebook and sit down and write these things out come up by the spirit one of the things i can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the holy spirit will speak to you he will correct you he will applaud you he will rebuke you he will encourage you he will challenge you let the chastening of the lord not be something that you resent whatever happens in that secret place embrace it as the refiner's fire it is going to be the key to your next level is that true praise god so you do this this is my first encouragement for us tonight these five things the lord put it in my heart and i felt to share with us to help us maximize our time Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for i give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law solomon is teaching us here for i was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the heart wisdom understanding forsake her not and she shall preserve thee take note the benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding she shall preserve thee love her and she shall keep thee seven says wisdom is the principal thing therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 says exalt her and she shall promote thee she shall bring thee to honor who will bring you wisdom and understanding not just wisdom wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her we are reading to verse 10 verse 9 she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear O oh my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of christ wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability 
to profess scriptural solution. There are cultural solutions to life's problems. There are occultic solutions to life problems. There are emotional solutions to life's problems. None of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions. But the wisdom of God, the wisdom of God, I have pursued the wisdom of God with my life because when I was exposed to my own folly and the fact that I am so limited and the consequences of foolishness the Bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of god's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind i like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives i want us to carefully examine the things that we do the degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of god every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of god it's an uncomfortable truth but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom i am ever ready to be shown by god the areas in my life where i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god it doesn't embarrass me i want to know i search for it like one who is looking for treasure if you do not contend for wisdom your life will be an unending circle of pain an unending circle of regrets an unending circle of many things most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. He it says it's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles, the modus operandi of the kingdom, it makes you wise. The word of God teaches you how to relate with difficult people. The word of God teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble. The word of God teaches you how to respond to unbelievers. Many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith. Wisdom teaches you how to communicate. Wisdom teaches you that when you are angry, be silent because every Every time you speak, you will speak in the flesh. There are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira. They uttered words that they are still paying for it today. Are we together? Our challenges, Dr. Mike Murdoch will say there is no money problem anywhere. And I agree with him. Most of our challenges, because you see, we are victims of our understanding. And most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge, our wisdom, our understanding. Guess what the Bible says? It says, through wisdom, a house is built. Then it says, by understanding, it is established. The firmness of that house is a product of understanding. It says, true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing. 
we must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Listen, there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate. This is the book that coordinates our success. There is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision making process will be accurate. Even if you study psychology, it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions. I have lost confidence in myself outside of the world. It says, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world. Listen, this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word. I have meticulously built my life on this word. I don't trust any other thing that is not this word. I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year. I want you to return to a place where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word many of us pray but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word it's very clear that we are not being governed by the word i can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication I'm not talking of linguistic excellence. I'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words. I see your behavior. I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance, when responding to your critic, your critic already knows the truth. Don't try to explain. It's a waste of time. You don't respond to critics by verbal communication. You respond to critics by consistency. Consistency of your results. Is that true? When I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance, it is because we have not seen the deception of pride. The deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away. That's exactly what pride does. I love the word of God. I stopped reading my Bible to finish it. I stopped reading my Bible to cram scriptures. I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans 
they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong. Say, I tried it on my own wife. Look at how she's behaving now. You tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you, your prayer stopped being answered. That's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you. I can look at your life and know how much the word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce. You see, let me tell you something. If I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered, as simple as neatness, I know you don't have respect for the word of God. If the word of God can purge your spirit, then your life will reflect it. You cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty, unkept, looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter. No, sir. No, sir. The word of God will make you to buy a iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings there is a way kings behave and the bible tells you that you have been made according to revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto god a kingdom of kings and priests so you speak like a king you act like a king is that true it is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa. Christian versus Yoruba. Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture. Most of us, our lives have been destroyed because of our, our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenets that are completely anti-Christ. So although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual, but the, the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight God in our lives. I have no loyalty to anything that is not of God. This is it. This is my new culture. Scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe. I'm not saying culture is bad in itself. But trust me. There are demonic and satanic areas. There are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves. But I tell you there are weights. A weight is something that can provide an impedance. It can stop your movement. It says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life. In our place we don't do this. In our place women cannot talk. Who is this woman preaching? I can't listen to her because in our, which your place? Who invented it? Oh God is speaking. I will listen. In our place, young people don't talk to old people, even respectfully, even under the anointing. Are you seeing that now? It is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom. They drove children from coming to Jesus. Something about their culture taught them that. And Jesus said, ah, 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 let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. He said, for, for such. That means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning. That until you become like one of these, not childish, but childlike. Very malleable in your faith and understanding. He says, the kingdom is for such. Are you getting blessed tonight? Get wisdom, get understanding, make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus, although I was born in so 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 place, I was born under so 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 condition, by the grace of God, my children will not live under that kind of condition. The Lord, by His Spirit, will lift me. It's not about Nazareth, it's not about where you come from, it's about your ability to walk with the Word of God and bring that transformation hallelujah by the grace of god i have made it a personal commitment as a minister that i will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors never never you will never see me do that i love my people 
wonderful people, love my region where I come from. But by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, born nor free. We are all in Christ. So I cannot see IK and say IK is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta, and I say you are my person, be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences. Ah. Elohim Adonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially it says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children so when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry you see that living a fake and a foolish life that's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children the Bible says it the Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing. That there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing. Regardless of whatever opinions are available. Scripture cannot be broken. It is by these two immutable things. God swore his word will not be broken. Heaven and earth will pass away, but brothers and sisters, men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance, nations and kingdoms will rise and fall. But the word of God remains consistent. One of the greatest fears, if I would say in my life, is to find out that at the end of my life, I believe they lie. I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he will tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. 
this ministry is a tithing ministry i'm a tithing person there is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us that's why there is no amount of recession i say it with all humility by the grace of god almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of god for he said i will build my church and if you allow me build it i will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail this is the wisdom of God. I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is it is the word of god that gave me that wisdom so i can insult a man because i do not like something about him yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me it is for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause many do sleep there are many people who would have cheaply received miracles but the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them the scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel he didn't tell you the vessel is golden he said the vessel is earthen so he can be angry like elijah or temperous like moses they still are anointed when i found out I don't have any problem with any man of God. You never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I learned from this scripture that as a man as he thinketh in his heart so is he so i stopped wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here gone are the days where people try to buy suit buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back have you seen territories like that they try to do physical things they have not educated the people in that environment then they make tap in six months they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment no sensitization so i learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes buying shoe buying all these things to prove a point that i can wait with the holy spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things i so admire will helplessly run towards me oh my god and how how true this is one of the truest revelations i know in scripture the supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life the realities that are consistent with your understanding it is true are we together the wisdom of god tells you there is hope for a tree even it be cut short in our society where we are we are more than happy to conclude on people you look at someone and say this guy used to be an arm robber there's no hope for him but when you study the word of god the bible is full of people that god transformed their lives overnight and my bible says that rejected stone ha ah, that rejected stone i'm speaking to someone in your family and all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people 
There are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality. And right now, they are, not, they are almost not even born again. Because their pride humbled them. They maintained their spiritual lives by themselves. But there are people who started this year saying, Lord, if you are looking for any vessel, can you use this drunkard? And God said, that's all I want. Come. And right now, as I speak to you, they are in various stages around the world. Setting a place, the kingdom of darkness. Because he uses the foolish things. When you understand this, you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people. You don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say, oh dear, poor woman, because God can pick someone. You see, the word of God makes men wise. The way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture. Whether it is a poor man, a rich man, I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. Go, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the barber of Joseph knew he was barbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me, you. There were people of Bas and John lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, quit before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adulam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood there. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Hold your Bible in one minute. And I like you to pray and say, Lord, there is, there is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. I'm tired of foolishness in my life. Lord, I come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of God. The quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own your own formula hallelujah sit down the wisdom of God come the wisdom of God teaches us how to relate with people is that true when when you study the wisdom of God the word of God you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say call me text me be my friend that friendship is a harvest you have to sow the seed so if I sit down and I find out that I love God but there are no friends as a lady nobody likes me as a guy nobody likes me the secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship see that when you lack helpers in your life the Bible gives you a prescription 
and you lack helpers in your life i can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing among them there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own it is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them many of us we have used our words to program woes ladies ah, it is not for us we are not us we are the we are the um uh, what they call that thing we are the outcasts we are the ones who our parents cannot this leave it to these people and the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake we have programmed nonsense and rubbish a name god did not call you you have allowed yourself to be called it again and again you called yourself ugly there is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly you called yourself irresponsible the word of god does not call you that way open my eyes help me believe i am what you say So friendship. The Bible says, cast not away your confidence. Confidence is not pride. Uh -uh. Confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture. That's confidence. Stability that is based on the truth of God's word. If you tell me, Apostle, I, I was passing across a shrine and I heard them talking about you, that they will kill you tomorrow. I'm going to sleep this night. I won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of God. And it can't be joy, it's a joke. If you know the mysteries that keep this man standing, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots. When the spirit of death knocks on your door, three scriptures come out like, like fire. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Number two, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you. Number three, I set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, I advise you and I chose it. Do you fight a man outside his will? Even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks. Why wouldn't Satan knock? Why wouldn't death knock? If God is knocking to enter. I don't know about you. The Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. Anything that must enter my life, if God knocks to enter, nothing will enter on his own. It's my revelation. So when men say there is a casting down, they allowed it somewhere. For me, when it knocks, I say, get back. For me, there is a lifting up. See, I'm not just entertaining you. I'm showing you how the word of God makes a man wise. It constructs your understanding. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefit. I expect favor every day. Recycled after 24 hours. It's not because I'm a preacher. I expect it. I found it. I found thy word and I ate it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. The word was not written for preachers, brothers and sisters. It was written for those who can believe. My mother started learning these principles. And you would find that people would start calling. Take a bag of rice. Give your mother. Take this. Give your mother. Working for her. She's not a preacher. And it's not because she's my mother. It works for anybody. He said, declare ye that ye might be justified. I will never say I am a failure. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Just because there is no food in your room, most believers will come, Kai, this life self, a luta continua, Victoria Escarta, is a, is a curse. You are reciting, you are enchanting, is the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine, and you read it. That's what we have been doing. You come in and you see lack and insufficiency, you declare, while I look not at the things that are unseen, but the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change, but the things that are unseen, I know that one day I will feed nations. Come on now. You are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening. You don't give room to depression. 
Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know my redeemer lives. Bible said Job did not curse God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah! Omega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being, it used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation, you lovingly say, No, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. The Bible says, He has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. Do you know it? Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions, very vulgar descriptions of themselves. The goal is for it to be funny. So somebody, usually there are a group of people who are like the referees. I will say my own, you'll be angry and say your own, and then, you know, that's why people were not doing well. Notice people who enter JS1 and by the time they finish writing exams, they come out, the only thing they come out with is a good certificate. Common sense gone, health gone. They are sick, they have troubles. God has not given me the spirit of fear. The Bible says I shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. In my world, there's nothing like Ember Mons. He daily loads. This is the day the Lord has made. He didn't say the Lord and Satan, the Lord alone made that day. Satan too was waiting for God to make the day. It was God that made the day. I rejoice in it and I am glad. You will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why. I said, Kai, this world, Nigeria I said, no. He said, for with joy shall I draw. I've taught you this. Frustrate Satan by remaining joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not in your results. If you rejoice in your results, the day you don't see it, you will not rejoice again. If you rejoice in your CGPA, your job, your new employment, I rejoice in the Lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it oh. in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like lumps hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he says it's true Go and drop that report and say, Lord, if I die, who will dance? You are reducing the number of people who will praise you. Ask Hezekiah. Isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said, Hezekiah, set your house in order. Hezekiah said, nonsense. I respect you. You are a prophet of God, but leave me and God. Shut the door. Hezekiah said, God, what did I hear you say? Remember your temple. When you talk about the temple, God listens. So, oh, Lord, your house. So, oh. and he said, No, 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 please, Isaiah, go back. Go back. Go back. I think it was a prayer department. I was, I was, um, Yes, on Tuesday, I was rounding up their session with them and I told them something. I said, as a worker in this ministry, there are benefits that should be yours. They are not, they are not privileges, they are rights. As a worker, there are certain things that should be yours. The Bible said a worker is worthy. The word worthy there is deserving of his wages. Not just a worker in koinonia. A worker in the house of God. The closest simile to wages is salary. That means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me. You have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of Nigeria. Have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of God? Is God speaking to you? The way I speak the way I understand is a revelation when you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are you are an idiot you are a stupid child I don't know why you and your foolish mother 
you are revealing something. The kicking is a revelation. It's a revelation that number one, you don't know that children come from God. Number two, you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit. There is a priesthood office that fatherhood has. The mother of Jabez was angry. She didn't know that motherhood is an office. And out of her anger, she named her child Jabez. Every time Jabez was to be good, that office cried in the realm of the spirit. And one day Jabez was angry and said, no, I can't continue like this. I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger. Your father looks at you and just says, look, it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole his shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger, he cost you. He said, this is how you will be like a goat all through your life. And you will think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same true story i'm rounding up i know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stop stealing he will not stop stealing yes true story god is my witness he was a popular face that i knew this guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him signing in two weeks he's coming back again that prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life comfortable the only thing that can set him free is the anointing you see the reason why we speak over people yes you speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances. Fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the Old Testament. In the New Testament, a man treats his wife bad and the Bible says his heavens will be closed. This is why many fathers are going through hard life in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. This attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag. You are a father here. Please apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens will be closed or not. So you can labor. You finish insulting your wife. Call her stupid woman. You and all your five useless children. You are going for the business meeting. They call you when you are almost there and say, sir, just go back. It won't work again. You say, what do you mean it won't work? I just prepared my paper. The heavens. You always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness. depletion from as they say from grace to grass close heavens that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer listen let me encourage you with these keys that i've shared with you i expect every wise young man whether you are staying with your parents or not or if if both of your parents have gone to be with the lord you have spiritual parents you have all kinds of representatives if i were you do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them as you are going home now don't just go as a big man big man no money close heavens go and meet your parents mommy i don't have so much money but i made pepper soup for you i went round the city looking for bush meat that you like i found it ah really my daughter you mean bush meat okay god bless you ah mommy no i came with this one specially please pray for me what kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look 
and say kneel down that's it i can guarantee you that prayer is not noise he said go and make me venison that i may bless you you don't bless without venison the foolishness of your people you stroll to anybody and they don't bless me you think it works like that was i was it just because he was hungry it's a principle honor your father and your mother i'm telling you this is some of us this is what will break this joblessness these problems some of us you just need to go back home and say mommy i'm sorry for five years i have given you a lot of headache you people don't even like seeing me but i want to tell you that i got connected to a ministry and god has changed my life i just want you to speak over my life i don't have much but i came with 100 naira recharge card they may have 10,000 naira in their phone but that 100 naira is what will open you up they will say kneel down let me tell you whether your father is a believer or not if he speaks to you it's an office it will open your destiny are we together back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking they learn how to ride bike during christmas <laughs> until they die from it and you just sit and say look three or four friends let's see what we can do one day small program somewhere at the back of one football field put one speaker and the rest organize something even if it's for the children Instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children, gather them. Let them, even if it's biscuit and sopo or something, you have done something noble for the kingdom. And then take God on Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. You shall obey and serve me, and I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life, and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, Himadonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be. spirit and seal the remaining part of this year seal the remaining part of this year go ahead and pray Pray. Lord, we seal 2017 in honor and glory. You crown our year with honor, and the mountains drop fatness for us. You crown our year with honor, the year of triumph. You crown it with honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray and say, Lord, if there is anything according to your predetermined counsel that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life, the remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days, am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. Shabakatoka sadabakatabaladaba. In 16 days, you can still confirm your word concerning my life. 
Usually heavy and was about to capsize. But when the ark of God entered the house of a man called Obed Edom, without prayer in 90 days, three months, everything changed. I like you to pray and say, Lord, I am a living tabernacle. As I go home or wherever it is that I'll be going to, I represent your possibilities. I represent the ark of God. Go ahead and pray. I go home to smash the works of darkness. Every activity of divination, every activity of darkness over my loved ones in the name of Jesus. As I step my feet, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, the heavens are open unto me. In the name of Jesus, I challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death. Take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I lift the standard of the blood. I lift the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. I lift the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness, I cause infirmity, I cause sickness. We cause cancer, we cause arthritis. We cause hepatitis. We cause every killer disease. Every terminal disease. Take your hands off our loved ones. We cause the spirit 
out of poverty and hardship, stealing resources from our loved ones, causing conflict in homes. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to program favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family help us for my destiny Lord I receive I receive I receive all kinds of favor all kinds of favor favor men are rising men are rising in the name of Jesus favor hallelujah listen I want you to believe me we are rounding up but you see not many people in this life have truly encountered favor. Favor is an experience that happens once, but the result continues without stop. We are going to pray this prayer again. Listen, the hardship in many of our families, even salary, will not cure it. Is that true? There are some of us now, if you get a job, and you are giving your loved ones three three hundred thousand per month even after five years it will not solve the problem 15 people in the house only one person is working is earning twenty thousand that's a cost when i say favor i'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in america take your mind away from any man don't add faces your own is to just create with your words are you ready to pray for me and for my family lord surprise us surprise us before december 31st lord do something that has not been done a major dimension of favor pray no matter what kind you have seen provoke another provoke another in the name of Jesus I create it I call it for I call it for in my life I call it for in this ministry I call it for for my loved ones I call it for strange favor between now and 31st December strange favor hallelujah we'll soon round up I'd like you to pray listen one of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom are you hearing what I'm saying now it is terrible to have someone in a family that does is has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mode you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again I have been born again I'd like you to pray two things Lord massive encounters 
I like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know Jesus. Lord, this is this is the season they must encounter Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. I pray for my uncle. I pray for my step siblings. Pray, pray. Lord, we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us. Financial troubles, spiritual troubles, they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade. Give them an encounter. Give them visions. Give them dreams. In the name of Jesus, break their pride, oh God. Give them solid encounters. Encounters with your power. Change them. Change them. Change them. Some of them have vowed that they will never give their life to Christ. I like you to pray and say, Lord, in your majesty, prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. Hallelujah. One last prayer and then we are done for tonight. Listen. All these prayer points I'm giving you, when you go back, pray them. Especially this prayer of salvation. I can tell you this. With the little experience I have counseling families, 90% of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for Satan to destroy people. Notice how Satan does it. In every family, he must search for somebody. One bad boy, one bad girl, or maybe our fathers, our mothers, everyone tries to press into God. You just hear that police are calling you. Go to the police station. They will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop. The bill is 400,000. And before you know it, the money you have saved, that's a devourer. All this stealing you see young people do, especially all these young guys, steal something shamefully, come and put their parents in trouble. The money that should be the school fees of five people, you have to take it and go and settle police. It's the devil. What about the young boys that have not reached age of driving? They smuggle out a car and go somewhere, an expensive car they just bought with their friends. Get drunk and smash the car. These are all the skimmings of darkness. Many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children. A lady jumps the fence and disappears one week. Nobody has seen her. They are all afraid. They start contacting the police, paying money, and then she strolls in after eight days and says, why are you looking for me? It's the devil. A smart young gentleman about to graduate, they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party, Christmas party, that is the birth of Jesus Christ. Drinks to stupor and the friends strip, strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground. They come and carry him in the morning, arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends Christmas going to the station. I like you to say the devil is a liar. I'm, I'm showing you these are the things in, in many families. Satan does not want to see everybody rising. You see a gentleman, the only graduate, and because he's a giver, a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs. Or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100,000 per week. In six months, it has dried the finances of the family. He said, I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. You have to be watchmen when you are at home. Don't see things happen and join everybody cry. You know what to do. Go and lock yourself and say, Lord, this cannot continue to be. Quarrel between father and mother. Quarrel between husband and wife. All these bad, bad things the devil brings during this season. A time of joy and merriment 
all of a sudden that spirit comes into our families fire on the mountain everybody is living like a stranger don't you see that is an attack i'm telling you so that when you go back home everybody used to run away but now you are the one who will move and say no way i put an end to this evil in the name of jesus lift your hands let me speak over your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit as you return back you return in the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ any name and any identity the devil has given your family that is a mockery to redemption i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare that within this one month may the lord change your story i pray from the depth of my heart for any individual and any family that is called Ichabod, that the glory has departed i declare that because of your going back let there be a restoration of glory let there be a restoration of honor let there be a restoration of dignity anyone here still trusting god for a job i'm declaring you will not return next year without a job in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare if there is any manipulation of witchcraft for those of you who are traveling to the village and there are all kinds of warnings here and there either because your people are used to witchcraft I declare you will go and come back safely you will go and return safely in the name of Jesus hear me any strange spirits that enters your family during these times of love to scatter the families i declare in the name of jesus their end comes this season <laughs> hallelujah there are families right now who are even waiting for you to come because even one chicken they cannot afford for christmas i call on my god i cry before the god of heaven that between now and next week let there be a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies a miracle of supplies hallelujah i pray for those who are students do you know there are students that when they go home as soon as their parents see them their hearts begin to palpitate because of school fees in the name of jesus the kind of favor your parents have never seen i pray in the name of jesus let there be that kind of favor for them the kind of favor that will make your school fees look like pocket money in the name of jesus christ i pray for your spiritual life most people leave this environment and go back and return back as cold as whatever i pray for you you will return with even greater fire than you left with. whoever the devil is arranging in your life between now and january to destroy you i prophesy that your path will not cross in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and for those of you who will be traveling there are people who will be traveling from tomorrow whether by air whether on the road i speak to your journey i decree and declare you no armed robbers on the road in the name of jesus christ you will arrive safely and you will return back safely in the name of jesus christ i'd like you to wave your hands to jesus Wave your hands to Jesus. Father, we give you all the praise. After tonight, we'll officially be closing for the year. And um, we'll be resuming. Thank you. We'll be resuming 19th. 19th is the third Friday of January 2018. If you'll be there, I want you to clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very quickly before I take the altar call. Now. We usually send the prophetic word please listen we're a ministry that is guided by prophecy 
and i usually send the prophetic word 6 p.m on the 31st 6 p.m on the 31st how many of you are here and you do not get sms's from koinonia let me see your hands okay this is what will happen um protocol department sadly the public relations department have not started their work but for now protocol you please do their work let's see how we can um if you have not been getting text messages from the ministry this is what i want you to do after the grace uh where do we do it now okay at okay just somewhere here where aaron is stretching his hands you can just come around there and you quickly write your name and your number and then we'll have it and upload it on the central ministry database so that you can receive text messages now when you receive the text message it is for you to incorporate it in your retreat and pray it of course when we come here we'll open up the revelations but i believe with all my heart that next year will make this year look like child's play in the name of jesus i believe that with all my heart praise the lord hallelujah let's all stand you are here this is our last service an opportunity to connect you to jesus please no moving around overflow one two three those following online you're here and um you're saying apostle i've been hearing you preach but every time i want to come out there is a resistance this may be an opportunity you will not want to waste jesus is calling you the bible says that god so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish but have the way god's life hallelujah you are here and you are saying man of god before we close for the year i want to tap into this triumph package i want to rededicate my life to jesus probably at one time you made a decision for jesus but for some reason you found out that things have just gone haywire in your life and you've been out of touch with god and you're saying can i join them you're most welcome these two categories of people i'm going to count one to five very quickly wherever you are this is our last night together for the year you do not want to miss this opportunity with jesus wherever you are go ahead and come quickly overflow one two three make your way to the front very quickly god bless you koinonia appreciate them people are coming come to jesus the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away win that war tonight win that war tonight make a decision for jesus i believe there are still people outside if you're coming from overflow three please run very quickly run very quickly so that you can join those online you can follow us and say the prayer when i lead them to god bless you god bless you god bless you are there still people coming god bless you jesus is still speaking to people god bless you young and old make your way make your way very quickly apostle i'm not sure whether i'm born again i've always been in church join them very quickly if you are not sure it means you are not born again when the titanic sank there were only two lists those who were lost and those who made it if you didn't make it you were lost there was no in between so join them you are not sure you are not sure of your relationship with jesus join them very quickly join them very quickly you have been suspecting you are saved but you are not sure join them and be assured there is something called the assurance of salvation please very quickly let's save time our time is gone hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen i want you to lift your right hand very high to the heavens and i want you to pray this prayer you're not reciting a poem this is from it should be from the depth of your heart mean it say after me lord jesus please mean it loud lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god i believe you love me you died for me shed your blood for my sins tonight i receive you into my heart be my lord be my savior i declare according to your word that eternal life is mine from tonight and forever i belong to jesus keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father 
in the name of Jesus I thank you for this once we present to you trophies that attest to the death the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Lord I ask that you preserve them there is a grace that keeps men keep them in the name of Jesus Holy Spirit we commend them to your care your tutelage your mentorship you are the one who can make them expressions of true citizens of the kingdom and I pray that from tonight your ministry becomes effectual in their lives for those who are rededicating their lives to Jesus I pray for you the grace to stand the grace to be consistent the grace to be ever increasing is released upon you in Jesus name I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you you move forward ever and backward never in Jesus name amen and amen thank you hallelujah praise the Lord um, please be seated God bless you let me just um, I just feel led in my spirit to say one or two things and then we'll get to the word um, now I must caution us I have a responsibility to do this I'm a spiritual man and I stand over you as a father and I must make sure that God is helping us and we are growing please listen carefully make sure that you do not allow the good things that God is doing in this season whether in the areas of marriage finance and all of that to begin to mount unnecessary pressure are we together listen very carefully I must talk to you we are spiritual people and spiritual people are men and women who are governed by the word I know that many of you since last week you've been hearing people announcing alerts and alerts some people have gotten alerts close to millions and some person may just sit and say Lord but I attended the fast what is wrong with me and the devil can continue that conversation you see that now we have just announced people who are getting married and especially for our sisters now sisters I love you very much because of your composition please listen I hope everyone is hearing because of your composition the Bible says her desire shall be to her husband so when you begin to announce things like this chances are that especially for our dear sisters we can get into that pressure when will mine come when will I stand and if we are not careful the devil can cash in on that desperation and frustrate us is that true some of us because of the pressure you will quickly go and say yes to someone that was positioned by uh, may not necessarily even be a Christian just because you feel time is going and all of that one of the worst things that can happen to a believer and is proof of carnality is when you begin to compare yourselves unnecessarily the bible says and they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise when it has to do with the things of god you must be discerning are we blessed because there are many many others marriages that are coming you will hear other testimonies rejoice with them that rejoice and it is true we are humans let me tell you if it is god you too will stand here but you're not going to get it done through desperation facebook whatsapp connections um what do we call it all these antichrist systems it matters how you get connected to marriage this is something you're going to do for a lifetime and don't allow that pressure sisters are we blessed are we listening especially when you leave this environment and go to other fellow sisters like you who are not godly chances are that they will sit down a 30 minutes discussion will water down your whole prayer and fasting someone will come up and tell you a horrific story another person will tell you something else and please those of us who are parents here and those following online let me encourage us i don't believe that any godly parent should put pressure on their children to get married just as a way of massaging their ego we're spiritual people the bible says he makes all things beautiful in his own time 
so please you're a parent here you're a guardian let's be careful sometimes we don't pressure people directly especially for our dear sisters there are messages there are body languages that we communicate that put pressure on these people you know i counsel people and i talk to people all the time and sometimes i try to discern what is the pressure behind you know this gentleman he can't sit down he has become a hustler anything he hears that is producing money he wants to be part of it and the reason is because at the back of it there's someone somewhere mounting pressure on the gentleman at your age i already had a house and the guy feels guilty for being 30 and not having a house whereas the pathway he's taking is the pathway that will lead him to that blessing god gives people speed but he does not rush people there is a difference between speed and rush are we together i i just i just felt like introducing this to just keep our hearts together because you see our emotional levels are very different there are people just for this good news you see now may not sleep for days and that's not supposed to be an insult it is because we live in a society that has become so emotional everything around you is speaking to your emotions this is where being spiritual comes a spiritual man is not somebody who prays in tongues a spiritual man is one who has gained stability through the understanding of who god is and the integrity of his word that's spirituality are we together now yes so it's very important we we'll continue to rejoice with our people and support them but please please do not make a costly decision especially towards the area of finance and marriage two important areas that no one at all who loves God I will not know anybody I love and allow to make some of these careless decisions by God's grace we are here to help um, all our brothers sisters make the wisest decision in the different areas of our lives and where our experiences are limited we are very open to recommend you to people who we believe their wisdom is worthy of reception so please make sure that you don't make a mess of your life just because of societal pressure here and there you may be having a trouser of 20 naira have it with honor whilst you are trusting god to lift you is that true yes and um please parents have contributed and I, I say this with all respect and honor in hurting and destroying the life of young people they push us into seasons that were not directed by god there are many people crying and languishing in marriage right now there are many people whose whole lives have you know been reduced to shambles because of this mistake so it's very important remember that marriage will have children my father said something years ago that was very instructive to me he said it is parents that make mistakes children don't make mistakes so if you know that children are going to come forth from your union you should be honest enough to consider them in your decisions when you are saying yes to an ungodly man you are not only being wicked you are being selfish because children are going to come from that union and you are now submitting not just to a man you are submitting to a platform i'm not teaching on relationship tonight i'm just trying to make sure that that we are in a position where god can help us tonight are we together for me truly sometimes i get very surprised gentlemen do it but our sisters too sometimes people come to church they hear the word of the lord and you you labor do you know let me tell you this as a man of god and as a leader your greatest joy is to see people use the truths that you are teaching and their lives are changing so sometimes when i see the kind of especially marital decisions that sisters take i'm i'm tempted to ask is it that they don't understand what we are teaching or is it that they don't attend the meetings are we together and some of you don't like me as you are looking at me like this because you have trained your mind into believing that 
I might be antagonistic to your agenda. Only an unwise person, someone that has been at the focal point of your spiritual development, will God now use that person to destroy you? Is, is that not deception already? So many people run away. It's after they get married and go away and it backfires. Then you see them ringing your phone and disturbing you and saying all kinds of things. Just the art of humility to listen can save you. I always think about the children. You can do whatever you want with your life, provided you have a covenant with God that you won't have children. You destroy yourself and reap the consequences of your carelessness. But when you are bringing a child, I happen to be involved in the life of so many children and sometimes I look at them and I'm very sad because most children are paying the price for the selfish decision some of us seated here looking at me now you have lived your life paying the price of someone's carelessness don't reproduce that same result are we together so please and please in as much as we celebrate people and all these people you see i meet with them and i talk with them i pray with them so don't just forward any wedding card when we don't know you we don't know how god helped your decision we are not irresponsible people don't just say i'm a member of koinonia usually people hide under departments like prayer band they say i'm a member of prayer band and just because they are looking for financial support no we don't do that marriage is not occult it's something to be proud of this is the wonderful lady I'm getting married to and they talk to you. Is proud, is, 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 is very proud of any gentleman to believe you can outgrow guidance. It's foolishness. Are we together? Is God helping us? Say my children will glorify God through my life. Say it one more time. My children will glorify God through my life what i suffered my children will not suffer the price i paid my children will not pay it that's a good husband wife father mother hallelujah be happily married not just married be happily married be happily married being married is a choice being happily married is also another choice being uncomfortably married is also a choice the ball is in your court make a decision make a decision let your joy be preserved don't admire your single days after you get married and wish you were not married that's not a good thing especially i'm speaking for those of us who are men of god and those who are going to be called into the ministry let me tell you something there are not many things that can give a man of God joy because he's involved in pouring himself to people so the few things that are around your life that can give you joy insist that they are there prosperity can give you joy a good wife or good husband can give you joy well behaved children can give you joy a healthy church with listening members can give you joy are we together the things that give men by the grace of God the privilege that God has given me to rise in influence and a number of others who have gone before me that we've had the opportunity to talk let me tell you greatness is a very lonely realm if no one has told you learn it the life of great people is they are busy but there are not many things they don't have a system very few systems give back to them somebody did something one day here i think i've shared it and the person said apostle i want to hug you and i did like that they said no put down your hands let me hug you and suddenly it occurred to me that in years it's me that has always been hugging even when you say let's hug i'm the one who reaches out something as little as that so if if your marriage the only chance you have to be happy you ruin it because of pressure and because of saying look this is the only guy that is available and you destroy yourself 
you will live an angry life. When Dr. Billy Graham, now of blessed memory, was launching his library, his wife had gone to be with the Lord and he stood there. They were the presidents of different, different, um, you know, tenures together of the United States. They were all there to cheer him up. And he got up and you, you thought he would talk about the whole library thing. And he just made one statement. He said, as I'm standing here, I miss my wife so terribly. I said, wow. As an evangelist there are many people who cannot say that forget these lies people do in the public many people are not happy they are not happy and they had a chance to be happy they rejected it but as many as received him meaning you can reject him praise God I'm talking about something else but is it alright if we take two minutes to just pray for our families our lives is that okay please pray just you can sit down just pray truly speaking pray i believe in family i am an advocate of family there is no responsible man of god no responsible man of god who wants to raise believers whose families are in shambles what prayer are you praying when your family is in shambles pray pray don't look at me some of you are looking around this is a serious business pray please lord rescue me from this 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 siege of darkness this programming of lucifer that he wants to use to destroy the destiny of a generation pray lord i speak you're married pray for your home pray for your own family too lord there will be no repetition the pain i saw growing up will not repeat itself I disallow it from being featured in my own life pray don't say I'm not in a relationship yet don't say I'm not married yet or don't say I'm already married it's too late pray I insist to be responsible I insist to provide for my family hallelujah please be seated i think if, if this is all we do tonight it was worth it somebody may be asking apostle what do i do while i wait for my miracle behave well behave well it's amazing how many people will miss the will of god because of bad behavior not demons i'm saying this especially with a bias to our sisters Am I boring you? Is it all right if I just encourage us? Behave well. There is unexpected behavior that opens you up. Many people don't behave well. And we learned this from our society. We don't behave well. We are rude. Dishonor everybody. We have been taught this, this demonic thing that we call class is a spirit. That is eating up the destinies of people most ladies call commitment and seriousness being cheap the moment you are required to put your heart in what you are doing they say no I can't be that cheap the society has sold a lie to us and we destroy our homes most brothers especially some of us that God has given a little influence this our pride is what will never allow us to move forward. We think we are big men. We want everything to happen in life at our own terms. No, sir. No, sir. Marriage is not by force, but if you must engage in it, please think of these children. Please think of these children. Forget about yourself. You can ruin your life and find something else to do. But don't bring any child on earth. We already have enough children on earth who are wasting away don't add to it behave yourself well behave yourself well what do i do while i'm waiting brother be serious be responsible about your life is that true be responsible coordinate your life together where am i going don't carry somebody's daughter 
and an ad in your life and frustrates the poor girl's life in the name of marriage now ladies should not marry men just because of a brighter future i've said it that's investment however however a brother cannot carry a lady that is not going anywhere and keep wasting her time you see many of our dear women all around suffering in the hands of visionless men it's not that they forgot where they are going they never knew where they were going from beginning that's why we counsel people that's why we talk to people that's why many people are not happy because they think that when you counsel them especially where you have to tell them no this thing mm -mm, it's not working out they get angry because in their minds you are an enemy of progress not knowing that that's you delivering them from decades of pain there are some mistakes that even if corrected can never you can never have it the way it was again are we together there are things it is best to get right once and for all thank you jesus let's get to the word koinonia is quiet were you blessed that's the work of a good shepherd to talk to you and love you too much to have. you'll be surprised that this little word now that i said is somebody's deliverance someone was about to make an unwise decision and jesus just came jesus the way showed you the way out of every nonsense please destroy any relationship that is going nowhere and you you can know that this relationship is not going anywhere get out of it immediately a man that is beating you before marriage there is nothing to pray about let him leave if there is a problem we have miracle service we finish seven days prayer and fasting if he loved god enough he should be here is that true you see the signs everywhere there are few people who get into wrong marriages not knowing it's a lie there are signs everywhere a jimmy says love is blind but marriage will open your eyes most people most people god showed them the signs but they refuse you know no no oh god i'm you know that i'm not young i'm not a fool don't think this person talking to you doesn't know what he's saying oh apostle age is not on my side i want to have my children fast are you the first to have children children are a heritage from the lord one isaac one isaac one isaac there are people with 12 children they died fast because of those children do you want a child or you want a blessing blessed be the name of the lord okay tonight we are going to talk along the lines of spiritual growth i i thought through a few things during the week and i like documenting my contemplations and that's going to be the basis of our discussion tonight quite a number of things tonight is a very serious discussion and um i have been concerned and, and I, must, I must admit to you that it's once in a while the Holy Spirit just brings it as a burden. I have been concerned about the body of Christ generally. I think about the body of Christ. I've been concerned about our growth as a body. Not just as a ministry, but as a body. I thank God for the wonderful things that we record as a corporate body, the church. But I think that one of the greatest challenges in my opinion with the body of christ is not demons it's not fake men of god it's not all of those things it's not exaggerations it's lack of growth you can know that a church is growing by seeing certain exact things happen you can know that a believer is growing our indices that we have created to measure growth needs to be balanced and guided otherwise we may fall prey of satan's deception are we together it is the will of god that every church must grow it is the will of god that every believer must grow 
but then we must examine our growth very carefully second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 we'll read 16 and 17 second timothy chapter 3 read the first two words just first two words ready one two read one more time one more time one more time it says all scripture this is the first error that i think the devil is bringing to the body of christ we are gradually edging out the richness of the word in an attempt to try to create some kind of balance or create to to further our perspectives really that's the expression we have started throwing away scriptures the bible says all scripture old testament new testament genesis exodus leviticus revelations the gospels the epistles the torah the poetic books all scripture is given by what the inspiration of god and is profitable everybody say all scripture is profitable say again all scripture is profitable genesis is profitable exodus is profitable leviticus is profitable deuteronomy numbers profitable revelations profitable we we've had all kinds of theology coming out right now that try to push some parts of the world to mean that they are not relevant in our context today in an attempt and i'm not just talking of um what we call the grace movement alone not at all there are many people who have come up with a system did you know that even certain recent versions of the bible now are being so edited that certain uh, uh, volumes of of chapters and books are not edited taken away completely all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable number one for doctrine number two for what reproof three correction for instruction in righteousness next verse please 17 that the man of god may be mature perfect mature complete thoroughly furnished that means if i exempt myself from the experience of certain truths as contained in this old scripture i may be furnished but not thoroughly furnished and there is a dimension of god that i may never experience are we together now all scripture i don't take the bible and then stratify it and say i'm just for the gospels i'm just for the pauline epistles i'm just for eschatology the study of end times i'm just for the torah i'm just for this i'm just for wisdom the poetic books i'm just for the prophetic books the bible says all scripture all without reservation are we together so let let's be very careful now i i respect the body of christ by god's grace by position uh, as far as my love for the body is concerned i think that i've already communicated it in the clearest form possible that you know i love the body of christ i have extreme honor for the body but we must be careful i think we're making a serious mistake and it's going to destroy us if we neglect the truth of scripture just because it does not sound comfortable as far our, as our perspectives about god is concerned all scripture all scripture growth is something that we all long for we desire growth in any and every aspect of our lives when we talk of growth we talk of increase growth talks of increase increase in size increase in capacity increase in platforms increase in access all of these things are measures of growth increase in resources but then the, the dimension of growth that i want us to focus on is growth as increase in the comprehension of truth comprehension of truth not just acquisition of things growth as seen by our comprehension of the truth
you look at the body of Christ and there are many things that happen around the body that are statements statements that communicate to us that although there's action although there's a lot of motion although there is a display of gifts the gifts of the spirit but there really isn't growth and i'm concerned because if we are not growing then it means something will happen to us one day that will sabotage god's intention and desire for us are we together I was watching TV I don't know when when was it and a very nice program and then the next thing I think the worship team there were singing and they just raised a song and I couldn't believe it I'm not talking of a secular song I'm talking of a senseless song spiritually senseless do you know the kinds of songs now I'm just trying to let's reason together can i continue is, is that all right look at the kinds of songs that we sing in church especially songs that we sing for praise worship sessions it's clear that both the members and the singers don't think about what they are singing is that true is it matters don't say it does not matter we sing songs that are not consistent with god's character of operation now there are certain aspects of the faith here and there that we may disagree but foundationally there are truths that should be kicked out by every and all persons out of the body of christ those informations are not for christians they are captured in our songs everyone just writes a song and we are so concerned about the melodies we continue to sing all kinds of nonsense and rubbish we rehearse those songs we score those songs and nobody has the spiritual understanding to say something is wrong do you not know that singing is prophecy too you are speaking to the destinies of people how about teaching the word listen most of us men of god think just because you read your bible and you have intelligence to understand what it says it means you can teach teaching is a gift oh. teaching is a gift there is the gift that that office there is the office of a teacher but god can give you that access to understanding so the body of christ is full of knowledgeable people knowledgeable people theologians and men and women of god who are vocally sound we have oratory we have good speech command and because of that we believe that the moment you are a good communicator you can stand and just pick one scripture pick another and put them together and begin to communicate thoughts look how misled and deceived the average church member is not necessarily because the man of god is bad but his perspectives do you know that is is when you stand before people to teach you are shaping their understanding based on a viewpoint you are giving them and it matters you will be judged before god if you cause people to see life from a perspective that is erroneous so scripture says not everyone should presume to be teachers that you are quoting scripture does not mean you understand it that your teaching looks complex does not mean you understand it hmm. men of god have dappled into subjects in a christian faith that they have not had unique illumination from the spirit and we have carved out opinions and arrogantly taught those opinions and misled members so there is no growth you hear it in our songs you see how believers behave outside of church walls no character no good behavior anger everywhere now that person you see is a chief usher that person you see when it's time to lay hands that individual comes can even be the pastor himself or the pastor's wife something is wrong are we blessed is god helping us god desires that we grow i think one of the most deceptive scenarios that make us think that we are growing is the display of gifts everybody say the display of gifts 
spiritual gifts nothing is more deceptive than rating the spiritual growth of an individual a ministry an assembly just based on the flamboyancy of the gift now don't get me wrong if you are growing it must tell in your dispensing the power of god however using gifts as a platform for growth is a big error very big error let me tell you the truth when i pray for koinonia i, I am telling you the truth i'm not praying for the power of god to move i'm not praying that i'll be able to prophesy and speak to people no i'm praying that the communications the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart will be as revealed by the spirit you can wake me from bed and i can get up and go to a world conference and that meeting there will be such dimension of a move of god you will think i've been fasting for one year and so you will be deceived that just because you saw the power of god moving in unusual dimension this guy must be deep in the spirit it's a lie it's a lie hmm. are you getting what i'm saying now say gifts the gift of the spirit is never an accurate measure of a man's spiritual growth so there is a problem in the body of christ gifts are charismatic gifts are flamboyant when you are gifted you will have a lot of money because that's value itself people will come to you people will sow into your life you see that do you know one time i think we were in um was it three years or so ago when kano I was ministering at a PFN, a PFN conference and you know the power of God wonderful things were happening there was such a dramatic move of the spirit and all of a sudden here comes this woman this old mama she just came out I called her out by prophecy and I saw something about this woman this woman reads her Bible she finishes the whole Bible like every two two or three three weeks she's an intercessor now can you imagine that this woman came out in honor that i called her and i would be foolish to imagine we're at the same spiritual level when that woman stood before me i saw a woman that knew god forget that she was not called into ministry nobody is inviting her the woman would have been to her it was an honor that joshua selman would lay his hands on her if i had my way i would just kneel down and hold her leg and say please whatever god did to you may he do to me but simply because i'm the one wearing suit apostle joshua selman and everybody is seated you will see that and because the mama does not look very intelligent doesn't have all the phds and all of that brothers and sisters that is depth that is a dimension of relationship are we together but just because i'm standing someone is shouting outside someone we're not trivializing these things but sometimes we ourselves can be deceived if i ask you who is the most spiritual person in koinonia now you will point to me it's a lie oh. it's a lie hmm. there was a woman called anna the prophetess in the bible no crusade no leading even in the temple they didn't give her any prayer point but she was quietly seated praying for the consolation of israel she prayed jesus to appear let me tell you some of the deeply spiritual people are not even in ministry you don't know them they are not on tv they don't have any name you see one old woman who wakes up four o'clock every year for 37 years i don't think i have that kind of discipline 4 a.m even if she sleeps by two by four she will wake up there are women who get up and go and pray in one small local village church they are, they they own the key of the church prayer time is five o'clock but they wake up by four they are in the village praying having the encounters that we brag around that's their atmosphere of living and yet just because they cannot operate facebook and they cannot make noise we are here bragging around with our names all over google and people think that we are the ones who are spiritual we must be careful what we call growth 
otherwise we would deceive ourselves and deceive others is god speaking to us tonight i have seen people and i have met people some of them have even come for counseling when i stood before them the depth of presence they carried i'm not talking of anointing no goodness you look at them and you yourself after the counseling and prayer you you go back and say god Abba, god am i not available again i have seen them i have seen people i have seen people who this vision thing we talk about they didn't even know that's the name of what they were having before people started experiencing angels you talk to them they will say it casually oh is it that angel he comes to me i'm 69 years he started coming when i was 21 just because they've not written a book and nobody knows them the church must be careful just because you have prosperity just because you have a crowd of people outside just because you can teach the word of god just because you have some measure of excellence those things are wonderful but they are wrong indices just because you can teach the word just because you can call someone by word of knowledge just because you can prophesy just because you can speak i can stand right now and tell you that somebody will shout outside not that god told me me joshua selman somebody will shout you see somebody jumping out and shouting and just because I said it and it happened, you will now look and say, ah, this guy. Only God knows what must be going. Nothing is happening. This is gift. Gift. We equate faith with money. So if I come and you look at what I'm wearing, if you think it is nice, you just say, Kai, this guy must have faith. Is that true? Is that really true? You don't like what I'm sharing this night? We have to be careful the indices we have put together to measure spiritual growth is destroying the body of christ so there are people who will leave god god go places just give me a car and give me a suit and you wear it and people say my god the word of god you are changing in one month <coughs> a car a house miracle alert some of us believe that just because this alert entered your phone is a sign that your growth is tremendous it's not this is why those who don't experience those things go back and they want to give away the health of their status with God to get those things. The voice of the Holy Spirit is seldom heard in the body. Do you know you can walk in the gift of prophecy and yet not hear God? Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down So I pray a lot tonight Spirit break out Shed an in Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Wrong parameters very wrong parameters there are people who were doing well but they left what they were doing because they want to embrace other parameters as defined by the body to show you are spiritual they had a healthy prayer life they had very healthy dimensions then just because one or two areas were not there they feel intimidated when they stand if i tell you stratify men of god now according to anointing and power you say joshua selma you stand in front then one brother who is just a prayer warrior with his 200 naira trousers and palms you say stand behind 
you too are you can't you compare you will be lying you will be surprised that in the realm of the spirit i will not even see that guy not even close to him who taught us this we were wrongly mentored to use wrong parameters so those of us who god has helped to be highly gifted and anointed we have we have created an impression in the body that just because the gift of the spirit flows powerful in your life automatically it means you know god no didn't the bones of elisha raise a dead body i'm sharing with you my contemplations that there's something wrong with the body am i against prosperity no never will am i against lifting am i against influence no but we're making a big mistake sometimes you know and i thank god for the privilege he has given me to inspire a lot of people i i i consider myself to be an inspiration to many people in this nation and around the world and i thank god for that privilege i travel for meetings and every time as soon as i come out of the car there's a row of young people overflow i see the admiration i see everything and everybody's watching they are watching what i'm wearing they are watching if they are hoping will i fall when he passes me and i just keep nodding my head i'm saying these people really do not know who god is when you know god ba it will take grace for you to want to go out of his presence even for ministry when you know god it will take the grace of god for him to tell you look son i know you are but you go out and do some other things that's why we are not changing ever learning but we are not changing you look at people they've been members of a church for 20 years no change at all they pray they fast they do a lot of these things but the truth is there is no transformation whatsoever spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian listen to me let me clear certain things longevity in the christian faith is not equivalent to growth no sir just because you are you gave your life to christ in 1997 and you are celebrating your 11th birthday as we say in the faith does not mean that you have suddenly become matured we we pride ourselves in all of the say where i remember when i was a baby christian in in 199 because just because you gave your life to christ in year 2000 and now it's 2018 you imagine that a, an eight-year-old uh, baby would have been grown now and then you now imagine that you too you would have grown no sir our churches are full of people who pride themselves they say look all these things you people are doing we gave our life to christ in 1964 and i say that with all honor what happened from 1964 till today you have been the same person in fact you have gone backward more than 20 years backward a man can give his life to christ and in one year with hunger and passion and fire attain more in one year than someone will attain in 30 years it's true overtaking is allowed in the spirit your growth is subject to your passion your hunger and many other things that i'll be showing you but just get the record straight brothers and sisters and those following online that longevity in the christian faith does not automatically translate to growth truth be told if you were doing business with god and you have stayed long there is a lot you have to teach people but just that you have stayed long on its own that you remember the day you came out for an altar call as 20 years ago that does not mean you are mature a lot of baby christians keep saying when i was a baby christian whereas you can see the parameter spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance 
that you have been attending koinonia for many years that you have been attending church for many years that you attend service four or five times a week as important and profitable as that is that does not translate to spiritual growth there are many church addicts who believe that just because they are addicted to church program doing one thing or the other oh i'm a deacon i'm a deaconess i'm responsible for baptizing people i'm responsible for school of ministry i'm responsible for marriage counseling i'm responsible for building they have activities that commit them around the church for many years and they think because of those activities they are matured so when you say look i remember when we started the building project remember 1991 they nod to mean that oh that time when we were children they, whereas they are still children by god's standard say amen spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance let me surprise you spiritual growth is not even determined just by the religious study of bible I describe it that way so that you don't think I'm against Bible study. There is a religious study of the Bible where men just, there are many theological experts who have read the Bible. The nature of their vocation, the nature of their work necessitates that they must read the Bible thoroughly and research, but they don't know God. Some of the people who translated this Bible did not know God. It is part of the reason why they did a lot of things to this Bible. I'm, I'm, it's not something to discuss now. Are we together? Just because you are around a Bible study group, just because you have been given an opportunity to be preached, to, 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 to be preaching around or doing all of these things does not mean you are growing spiritually. hallelujah is God speaking to us not determined by any of those things spiritual growth is not even determined by the amount of testimonies you receive all of a sudden if I get a testimony Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday chances are that I can deceive myself that because I had seven days stretch it means I've entered a new dimension with God. No, sir. No, sir. Can just be that you are enjoying prophecy. Someone just spoke over your life and things are happening. But that may not be. Because there are people who say, if I am really growing, why am I not getting a particular testimony? Or this testimony? Or that testimony? And those who get the testimonies now intimidate others. Say, well, you see, you are not getting anything. No, sir spiritual growth is not measured by ministerial growth it's not necessarily so ministry can be growing but you are not growing members are multiplying but you are not growing branches are multiplying but you are not growing sermons are multiplying but you are not growing books multiplying but you are not growing the level of excellence in the ministry multiplying but you are not growing none of those things in themselves they are only supportive reasons for spiritual growth but not the basis for the measure of spiritual growth is God helping us that's the reason why someone can raise a song and, and raise a, a song that does not carry any value spiritually and the next thing you see people just dancing and sweating and jumping and you are wondering i'm not teaching you to be cynical you see god is a merciful god and i taught you the character of love that love judges intentions more than actions so god can see an ignorant people just dancing around for something that doesn't make sense like idolatry and he looks at the sincerity of their heart and still reaches them but that does not justify what they are doing are we together i'm going to share with you certain indices that will help you know whether you are growing spiritually and will help you know whether the body is growing spiritually 
Do you know? I live a very busy schedule. Most of you know that. And honestly, let me tell you this. Sometimes I look at my schedules and I wish for the times when nobody knew me. I, I thank God it's always a privilege to reach out to people and bless people. But sometimes I'm on my way going for a trip and I'm tired. I'm going for a ministration and I'm just there wondering, my God, here we go again. Lord, I do this because I love you. But I sit down and I admire those days that I can stroll out in the open and nobody knows me. I can go in peace. Now I hardly can even walk in the day. Someone can see you and embarrass and say, Apostle, I've been trying to see you. The, the queue was long. Now that I've seen you, please just speak a word. As if you are not a human being. Now that looks like fame because I'm giving you a word of caution because this is what some of you are dying to get. There is a side effect to greatness. Listen to what I'm telling you. You literally will lose your life. If you are not careful, you will lose your mind. That's why great people you can see that they do a lot of things one day you see a great person go and commit suicide and you are wondering how could someone so wealthy and influential hang himself you almost don't have a life at all we call it a celebrity lifestyle as i just said some of you are happy you are just say oh god give it to me be careful before you pray that prayer please listen to me with your ears and your spirit this thing we call celebrity lifestyle it has a serious side effect to your Christian life am I rejecting influence no no I will always balance what I'm teaching but be careful I look forward to the times when I can go and smuggle myself and hide somewhere do you know for me to have time to pray there must be a special arrangement you must shift the phone away you must off television you must off light you must find something to charge your atmosphere i jokingly tell my boy sometimes when i'm going to select the clothes that i i want to wear i just stand and i look at my clothes and i say you see this is how we sin against god when i didn't have anything i just go and in five minutes you've picked something out but now that god has blessed you which of the hundred shoes will i wear which of the 50 suits will i wear they look little but they are eaters of the quality of your life not just spiritually but in every wise they can rob you of the richness the value of life and living listen to what i'm telling you it's true it's true if you came to my house now and you saw me eating roasted yam you'll be surprised now as if i don't have a right to do it this is my own life but simply because of the position i occupy <laughs> apostle roasted yam no it can't be you see that let me tell you this let me tell you this not many people will admit this and tell you this is how people die spiritually because your whole life becomes plastic everything there is there is no realness between you and god again everything Are we together? You can't lie down and roll before God again. No matter what happens to your growth, preserve the things that help you know God. Preserve them. Don't lose them while you grow. Don't lose the secret place while you grow. Don't lose the altar of prayer while you grow. If God grants you grace to build a house, build an altar for you and God. Build a garage for your car and leave God outside. We must re-examine these truths as far as spiritual growth is concerned because believers listen to me it is important that we grow can i call you can i say come Shion. let's assume that shown just gave his life to christ now please look up everyone let's assume shown just gave his life to christ tonight and i attach him to dr emeka i say emeka please follow up on this person question does this gentleman really know what to do most people don't know in church they don't know what next they just say well 
in our church we we have we have discipleship class or we have foundation class or we have baptismal class or whatever they just recommend you when you say follow him say well i have one small prayer group come and join us that's, that's all i know do you know believers we are so basic in our understanding that's the reason why there is a lot of increase in membership but no maturity we are not matured enough you can't give what you don't have the average christian does not know how to make another christian mature even preachers even preachers you see people hang around your life for a long time they are not growing i've had the privilege of going around men of god who are influential and i've been surprised seeing the people close to them no no transformation at all yet a heavily anointed man one day Ben him got angry and fired all the bodyguards he said they are all godless and they are not serious they are just collecting salary Ben him is sweating and raising people from wheelchair and those guys are just there they are concerned about the six pack and everything he said get out of this place till today he does it when he's preaching and sees people start saying leave my presence it gives him memory of godless people hanging around him and not growing that you are close to God does not mean that you are in line with him. You can be close to the things around God, close to church. When they make altar call, you are the one who directs people. You are the one who does everything. And you can think because you are around the things of God. I will give you four indices that will measure. Thank you guys that are measures of your spiritual growth you will know tonight whether you are growing you will know whether your church is growing you will know whether your family is growing spiritually ready number one the first parameter to measure spiritual growth as given by god is your love life your love life write it down your love life first john chapter 4 a long reading 7 to 21 first john chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21 the first parameter to measure your growth in the kingdom is your love life everybody say my love life i don't mean love like love you know what i'm talking about love god and men let's read what the bible says beloved let us love one another for god is love and everyone that loveth is what born of God and knoweth God don't tell me you know God if I cannot see it in your love life there are many people we're still reading there are many people who claim they love God but there is no love in their life they don't love God and they don't love people the more the deeper and the higher you rise in God the more it translates to your love for people the Bible says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is what? So don't tell me you know God just because you are speaking Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Aramaic. No. I look at your love life. You may not have all the charismatism around ministry, but I want to see your love life. Continue please. Nine in this was manifested the love of god towards us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him it's a long reading let's see how far we go hearing is love not that we love god but that he loved us he's giving you the character of the kind of love he's talking about now and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin beloved if god so loved us please read on with me we ought also to do what look at the kind of hatred Ejimi, that is in the body of christ among believers i'm not talking of non-christians you look palpable hatred palpable resentment yet we keep writing books we keep saying we keep saying we love we preachers hate ourselves we have trained the members to hate themselves and everybody hates everybody a family of five people they hate themselves twelve 
no man had seen God at any time if we love one another God dwelleth in us that means I use love to show whether God is around your environment if you claim you came out of his presence if you claim you dwell in his presence and I do not see love the Bible is saying you are lying because that God cannot appear so I will use love like you spray a perfume and some of you who are very strong perfumes when you pass the perfumes can be, it can show that you were around this vicinity or you are around that's it God says that love is like the aura that flows the epitome of his presence is love not power love not power the Bible never said if you see power just know God is there it says that no man had seen God at any time if we love one another then God dwelleth in us and his love is perfected perfected full hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he had given us of his spirit we are reading to 21 it's a long reading and we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world 15 whosoever shall confess that jesus is son of god and all of that next verse it says and we have known and believed the love that god had sent to us god is love he says it again and he that dwelleth in love dwell in god and god in him so joshua selman you claim you are spiritually matured don't just show me by the miracles don't just show me by the wheelchairs and crutches alone in the order of priority let me see your love life not your prayer life your love life many tongue talkers don't have any love in that praying in tongues there is even flesh in it no love very powerful song i'm coming back to that song hearing is our love made perfect that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so are we in this world 18 we are reading to 21 there is no fear in love ah look at this there is no fear it's not saying reverence fear fear but perfect love casted out fear because fear has what if my life torments you you are, and you are not a demon spirit something is wrong with me because my life should encourage you should challenge you but not torment you there are people whose lives are a torment to others there are pastors whose lives are a torment to others there's no love there perfect love cast out fear because fear keeps people in a place of torment there are people in church who cannot do wrong things and come to a man of god and say look i'm so sorry i was in your house the other day and you noticed the bomb vita went halfway let me just tell you the truth it was me because they already know say you okay i'm coming let me just finish my prayer just wait for me and the guy prays for hours you are hearing him he comes out sweating and says sit down what did you even say and starts talking as though he was acting he was acting there because fear has torment he says we love him because he first loved us two more verses if a man say joshua selman if a ministry says if a christian organization say i love god and what talk to me he did his brother he said he is a did i say it all scripture was inspired all scripture that if joshua selman claims i come here and brag around and say the power of god is moving and i do not love a jimmy i do not love pastor alpha the bible says i am a liar and it tells you the reason why you are a liar so be patient he's explaining for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen he says how can he love god whom he had not seen you have somebody that claims you are of the same family and you hate the person then you turn to God and say, Lord, I love you. You are my Lord. You are my Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley. John says you are a liar while praying. Liar. While fasting. Dry. Liar. While praying in tongues. Liar. While on that crusade ground. Liar.
and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth have you ever been told that it's a command it's not just a choice to love is a command the level and the extent of hatred that is in church is scary from we pastors men of God leaders we train people to hate people let me show you growth we can look at koinonia today and know our level of spiritual growth as a ministry not just by the power that flows our love life our love life everybody say my love life i see your growth by how much you love people i see your growth by how much you care about people you just hear that ah somebody lost something it's good for him he doesn't listen no 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 no. you are here okay what happened how can we help love i'm deep in love with you lord very powerful song i'm deep in love with you Abba, Father, I'm deep in love with you, Lord. That's my confession tonight. That I'm deep in love with you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Listen, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why many people cannot flow in the anointing is because there is no love. Love is like a cleaner that cleans the valve where the power of God flows. There are people who the power of God can barely flow in their life. They pray like fire, but their hatred has clogged the passage for the power of God to flow in. One of my greatest desires is even the meaning of my name, the way to love. I pray all the time that God will keep my love life for people not just him I can lie and pretend that I love him but let it be shown by how I love people who is smiling because you are alive not just love I love you is not the show of love is one of the ways he said how many of you will see a brother listen carefully James was teaching us faith and works you are seeing somebody crying hungry and say oh I bid you Godspeed he said no Believers are not caring. This is where the orthodox assemblies, I doff my heart a thousand times for them. Pentecostal people, because we believe in life, when a member loses a child, everybody just goes, we don't want to be associated with that pain. We are life givers. Hallelujah. Is that true? And we leave the people to cry and we leave the people to go through all kinds of pain. But when there is celebration, oh, glory to God, we are happy. Everybody comes around. This is my son this is my daughter this ceo this businessman who was promoted i remember the night vigil when i prophesied to him because we like being associated with things that massage our ego jesus wept at funerals he was not too busy he was touched with the feelings of people's infirmity when he saw the woman who had five husbands and the six was not her own i know what joshua selma would have done madam and you have not come for koinonia what a stupid lawless woman but watch Jesus. The Jesus we are trying to become. I, I, we must make sure is this Jesus we are trying to become. Jesus goes to sit at a well and begins to converse. Is she so important? I mean, Jesus, you would miss crusades to talk with this supposed woman. He that dwells in love dwells in God. We have given Satan room to perpetuate hatred among us i'll not be surprised if there are people seated here in this place tonight that don't even see eyeball to eyeball they just hear the sound of one another good evening hey, how are you and everybody just goes no spiritual growth i'm deep in love with you Abba Father. i'm deep in love with you Lord. We're deep in love with you, precious Jesus. We're deep in love with you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
the first your love life the way you love people there is nothing more beautiful than seeing a human being who has value for life that's why all these wicked dictators are going to hell if they don't repent i guarantee you they don't need any vision of anybody saying i saw them in hell that's where they are going to if if your life dehumanizes another human being you are going to hell i'm telling you this should men are god's highest creation your life should never intentionally listen to me your life should never intentionally be the basis for the destruction of another no no there are some of us we claim we love god we claim we are prayer warriors we claim we are war giants we are ministers apostle joshua selman but people can never rise because of us someone comes to see you and goes back heartbroken and torn into pieces why are we like that just because the person did not achieve a task well are you this stupid you mean it you are doing it you don't know who is talking to you and then we feel say sorry brother bless you how are you ha -ha. somebody just annoyed me you are you are such an you are such an idiot you are a stupid person huh okay bless you bless you who are, who are you lying to don't laugh oh, i'm serious this night hmm. look at some of our parents on the way to church on the way to church who are the stupid people inside this car they didn't watch this car and they're on their way going that's the man of god he's going to conduct the service as soon as he drives um where is my bible <gasps> he's talking to his wife now i forgot honey i thought you were car don't honey me you are a stupid woman i always knew i made a mistake after 17 years you are still as stupid as you are and then somebody just knocked and say ah man of god can i ah bless you bless you brother no the bible said let that man know that he's a liar let that let that anointed man know he's a liar even with the anointing he's still a liar love must be genuine that doesn't mean people are not human beings don't just see anybody just pressing on you for something naughty and wrong you did and just say you see what apostle is saying oh there are lousy people that deserve deserve to be addressed in a way and manner it's still love yes still love love doesn't just I'm, I'm saying this especially for we young people because we we like being allowed to do anything we want to do whether it's good or bad no he that loves you will chastise you chastise you can you say your love life is worthy of emulation can you say whilst you are seated listening to me whilst you're outside those following online can you say your love life as you're seated right now is worthy of emulation do you seek the good in everybody there are people who are is their whole life is is like it's like they rejoice over the pain of others when they see somebody laughing they say, well why, why are you laughing what's the laugh for well i'm just i'm just just the glory of god so what is there to laugh am i looking like a clown how can your life be so sad like that love love i love people i love the workers in this ministry i love you with all my heart every one of you ask god he will tell you yes yes let me see your love by how much you lay down your life for your sheep let me see your love by how much you can sacrifice not how much you use people do you know there are times people sow seeds for me here and i look at the people sowing the seed and i look at the kind of seed they are sowing i feel so guilty so guilty i'm fighting with myself some of you as soon as that seed is coming say hey, why did you put it in an envelope how much is it okay seven is it nine or seven thousand say it's nine thousand sir say thank you father bless the person then you know that the, the person's need is not even your concern just to receive i really love people with all my heart it's one of the secrets of my work with god i don't just love god i love people and i'm careful to use that word because it's true you must love people as a father do you love your wife 
do you love your children are you compassionate many of us don't have compassion this thing called compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity weakness limitation say me i'm not an emotional person no it's not about crying you must not cry to show you are i'm not i'm not an emotional person in terms of cry but anybody the more you know god the the fortitude to forbear with people to understand with people must be there i remember one time someone just knocked my gate bang 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 and then i came i opened the door and i saw a woman standing wearing hijab and you know she was just asking for this i want I, I i actually was sad because of the way she was knocking you know and then i looked and and i just saw tears that's it i just said no 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 what is what is wrong now and i brought out some money just put something and gave her and she went away you know sometimes children will just gather themselves like this i come and knock the gate and stand as if as if i ask them to come now when i see those children truly speaking i know what they are doing is wrong but how will you start beating you see the way the hunger ravage faces i have to just find something and give them because if i give them money i know they'll go and collect it so you give them something they can eat there and there do you have compassion some of us i don't mean to insult you i'm sorry if i do but you are wicked yes you are wicked it's not it's not it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of your heart you can watch people in pain and act as if it's, it's not my concern no you can see hungry people and come with one thousand naira change it buy food there eat the bones take minerals squeeze the leather throw it and say okay, i'm going for cordon now see we'll see now no you are not tender-hearted your heart is hard like iron the bible speaks about those people that he will replace a heart of stone say a heart of stone say it say it a heart of stone with a heart of flesh a heart of stone some of us our hearts are like stone someone calls you and says look something is not working well in my life and just look so how is that my business sorry sir they just threw me out of my house I, I i just felt like sharing it with somebody even if you don't have house rent to give them can't you pray with them please let's be careful the way we treat people it is a proof of spiritual growth love love sometimes i'm tired in the night very tired i just try to stroll i'm strolling and i'm just seeing a missed call i can check sometimes 32 missed call one line and i just speak the call hello who are you and you hear the person saying something silly is this apostle joshua selman he said man of god i'm, I'm privileged you are calling me by two what's the issue Sir, I have many things. I don't even know where I will start from. This guy, 32 missed calls. You would think someone is sick in the hospital. But that guy just got up, sleep, didn't come. You see, so um, I, 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 I agree that men can be annoying. Let's, let's be very honest here. Men can be very annoying, except you are not a leader. Human beings, they can be annoying with their ingratitude. They can be annoying with their sarcasm. They can be anno annoying with their, 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 their sense of cynicism and disrespect and disrespect honor yet the bible says that you love everybody say i choose to love say it again i choose to love say i choose to love i want you to stand up walk around to 10 people and just hug them and tell them i choose to love you for the sake of jesus christ some of you it's not for the sake of your bad behavior for the sake of jesus christ i choose to love i let go I choose to love. I choose to love. I choose to love. It's a decision that I've made. No matter how annoying you are, I choose to love. No matter how inconsiderate you act, I choose to love. It's a choice. I choose to love hallelujah God bless you please be seated God bless you please be seated let's settle down
the second index to measure your growth is the manifestation of character character galatians chapter 5 let's look at the fruit of the spirit many of us don't have it you have the holy spirit but you don't have the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 22 galatians 5 22 but it doesn't matter what what perspective you look at it from we're looking at all nine of them the fruit of the spirit is love look at me now this thing we call the fruit of the spirit is the summation of what we call character character has nothing to do with personality i'm quiet i'm loud <clears throat> if the fruit the fruit of the spirit describes the habitation the atmosphere that produces character love joy joy brothers and sisters joy is not happiness if you don't have joy you don't have character every time we talk of character many of us just look and excuse ourselves in pride i'm not smoking i'm not looking for any man's wife so you think because of that you have character no sir joy 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 rejoice in the lord and let me tell you i know your joy when you are under pressure P pressure is where joy is demonstrated if you are spiritual you just heard that your phone that you bought one hundred and twenty thousand. somebody just stepped on it and you are saying i'm going to kill this person I think, well sorry we are human beings don't you make mistakes you too you are annoyed but joy everybody say joy joy you are there is that state of merriment in your heart for no reason they just tell you look um your mother's is um, health issue is getting complicated and you just say in the name of jesus i'm happy joy 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 is in my heart some of the saddest people in the world are believers that claim they have the holy spirit watch them as they drive around the road watch them as they talk there's no joy you see unbelievers sometimes they even hear bad news and they just laugh it over and go and take beer and maybe smoke or go around and that's the end of it they sleep under the bridge by morning they get up and that's it but a believer ah. joyless life and you find out that you can't receive anything the bible says he that sows in tears he will reap in joy it didn't say he will reap with joy he will reap in joy the atmosphere that will bring his receiving harvest is joy if there is no joy the harvest does not arrive you sow in tears not with tears but you reap in joy joy is what calls harvests I know your spiritual life by how you rejoice even in the midst of pain you go to the board three carryovers God you disappointed me give me back the 10,000 that I sold in Koinonia I gave project 10,000 I tied all of this the joy of the Lord is me. that's what you see. you come and you see your car they've removed something you kept the car in the market to quickly go and buy something and all these touts remove all kinds of things they've removed one part of the light it can be annoying and you stand there and the devil is trying to tempt you and you no, satan you will not see my tears i choose to rejoice a brother just walks up to you and says look i'm just announcing to you although we have done the traditionals something came up i will marry you again now don't lie that you'll be laughing so let's be human there's going to be pain but but this is where spirituality comes in listen this is where spirituality comes in you know that a man can receive nothing except it is given so lord i give you thanks and you just begin to say lord i thank you I give you all the praise I give you all the thanks and tears coming out of your eyes you don't hide it say Lord I thank you I thank you <laughs> ah 
brothers and sisters i show you a matured christian as one who produces joy in his life regardless of circumstances regardless regardless if i'm here right now and they tell me my house is burning let me tell you the truth i won't be happy but to say maybe i won't be able to sleep this night me joshua selman no 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 way ah, lord i give you praise thank you thank you that this house burnt and i did not die inside i give you thanks it would have been worse it is the mind that brought everything is still alive so i'm alive i've not really lost anything joy peace in this troubled world some of us don't have peace it's not just the word shalom are we together this peace you see is a revelation of the ability of god to be in control control my god is in control i need not fear what can man do to me i need not fear a great man in this country was kidnapped by assassins when they caught him they were about to kill him and they said look this and they looked at him he was restful very very restful and they looked at him they didn't know what to do with him he wasn't begging well okay 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 go out to the back of my wardrobe that's where the money is if it's the dollars check the other side mm, the guy was there restfulness we live in a troubled world you must have peace to survive most people don't have peace that's what causes high blood pressure there's no peace so they worry they worry about everything who will marry me i hope i will have a child though i hope i will have a house lord where will i settle will i be in zaria or this you are about to write jam yet you are asking god lord when i finish university who will be my wife what kind of worry is that he makes me lie down in quiet waters i receive grace to walk in peace you must receive it grace to walk in peace you are full of the peace of god people just come and say look hey the whole world is getting i mean the sun is going to hit the moon one object we don't know one ufo will soon hit the earth next week mm, i'm in peace great peace have them that trust him in nothing shall they be terrified great peace great peace everybody say i have peace say it i have peace say i refuse to worry prophesy to yourself i refuse to worry this this is the measure of maturity this is where the our orthodox circles beat us suppose pentecostal people hands down you will see a woman who had a car accident four of her children right there on the floor one no head one no hand and you see her singing a song crying but singing a song you try to stop i say no you people should not cry my children are in heaven this is the person who should be crying comforting you great peace our emotional world that does not trust god we are perturbed at everything i will give you a job tomorrow hey lord i thank you i call you by 1 a.m something came up that job is not oh god why are you doing this to me now stability restfulness my god is alive is god teaching us something tonight long suffering another word there is patience in our world of fast food quick tea fast uh, uh, what they call it indomie ready-made food there are other foods that just drop it put water and up you go we are in a rush we don't have patience it's led people into all kinds of things we are impatient do you know there are people if only they were patient for one more day they would see the salvation of the lord in their lives you've been traveling just when your miracle is about to come impatience cheats you do you know let me tell you how to know your miracle is coming the flesh begins to become so uncomfortable it starts offering alternatives the moment this starts you were praying non-stop for two weeks just three more days it looks like you are praying for one year it's a sign that result is coming the devil is trying to touch whatever he can touch so you don't have the same power to remain and receive that 
I choose to be patient. There are men of God who is impatience that drove them to go and collect power from sorcerers. The power is not working now. They have not experienced increase. Impatience. Some of our parents are in huge debt today because impatience did not allow. There are young people today. Just be patient for one year and build. No, I must marry by latest by June. They go and borrow 1.2 million at, at a 30% interest rate per month. And they don't think well. They just go and borrow it. And Satan, Satan, you will use that money or health, not even the marriage. That's Satan for you. Impatience has cheated our world of young people. Someone sent me a text I should pray that he must go to, is this Cyprus or where? That he believes in the word of God upon my mouth. That his mother is the one sponsoring him. I replied him back. I said, young man, your mother cannot afford your fees. Why must you go to Cyprus? He's already studied in Nigeria. He wants to leave it. Not that something is wrong. This supposed, let it be that me too, I read abroad. That gentleman now will allow the devil use him to yoke his poor mother to send him to Cyprus or send him wherever it is that he was going. I didn't pray for him. Gentleness. Gentleness. The character that typifies this is the dove. Many of us were not gentle we miss out on everything because we don't have gentleness many of us are introverted so we think we are gentle you are not don't confuse your personality with the fruit of the spirit this is the fruit of the recreated human spirit in touch with the holy ghost that you are a quiet person there are people who they just look depressed it doesn't mean they are gentle they can be wicked and wild it's just that they are slow to doing it doesn't mean they won't do it gentleness the way you eat the way you act you knock on someone's door you are not you are not you are, your presence is not inviting you are, your approach to life is harsh very wild goodness goodness benevolence goodness not just kindness goodness a measure of your giving not just money the ease at which you release things to improve people's lives goodness not just giving faith or faithfulness let's go to the next one 23 meekness meekness is is, is similar to humility meekness esteeming people better than yourself or at least not degrading people to rise temperance self-control 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 knowing when to speak and when to keep quiet knowing when to keep quiet even when you have what to say the bible says if a man err not in words that man is a perfect man perfection is not measured just by what you do but the ability to keep quiet do you know the level of spiritual maturity it takes to be silent when you have something to say a man is counseling you and is making blunders he's quoting wrong scriptures and you are very sound in the word yet you keep quiet oh yes daddy oh yes ah yes daddy and the man is quoting one scripture that doesn't make sense and saying something that is it's a total waste of time honestly but you have the fortitude yes daddy at the end of it he releases a blessing every other thing was false except that blessing that one you can be sure you got it but someone hey, that is sorry just to correct you <laughs> that verse is 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 is, is old testament ah, daddy you are getting old your memory and you you talk and you you are saying something that is so pungent and offensive and you, you say it's, it's how i am i'm very expressive character let me give you a few other scriptures we may not consider them for time's sake very quickly write this down romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to 5 let's look at that one at least 
Romans 5, 3 to 5. Then I'll give you two others. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. Please write it down. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. And then Colossians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 15. Colossians chapter 3, from verse 12 to 15. Let's look at Romans chapter 3, chapter 5 from verse 3. It says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope five and hope make it not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost he was talking about people sustaining the same power in times of tribulation can you go through difficult times and still give god the glory do you sustain the fortitude to not curse god like job's wife suggested he do and job said no 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 though he slay me yet will i trust him say amen number three the third index for measuring growth for a believer for a church for an assembly is god blessing you tonight is understanding 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 your love life character understanding hebrews chapter 5 please give us from verse 11 to 13 quickly hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13 it says of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing go ahead for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat this this guy is saying by now based on my investment in your life you should have attained a level where you should be teachers but you are still there struggling with the foundational things of the kingdom barren of understanding it says for everyone that uses milk is unskillful unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe no matter how long he has been in church no matter how old he is in age first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 then we look at chapter 13 verse 11 quickly please first corinthians chapter 14 i meant to say 14 14 and verse 20 first corinthians 14 and verse 20 let's read together it's projected one to read brethren be not children in understanding how be it in malice be ye children but in understanding be men hmm. this is apostle paul for you this guy was really a man he said when it comes to malice and all these other foolish things and nonsense be children be children but when it comes to the issues of understanding the kingdom be men, be matured, grow. There's too much childishness in the body of Christ. There are truths in the kingdom we must know. Your identity in Christ is the foundation for your growth. Who are you in Christ? This is not just a denomination's perspective. It is the order of growth. Because if you do not know who you are and who you are in Christ, like the book of Ephesians opens us up to every other thing will not work well I know my positional advantage in Christ my oneness with him that understanding is enshrined in my mind forever regardless of what I do I do from the standpoint of that understanding and then other ordinances of the spirit the Bible talks of the doctrines of baptisms the Bible talks of other things foundational things that must be in place the ministry of prayer at a level in the spirit you should not be taught the basics of prayer again that if somebody is oppressed they say have you prayed say no say pray now say okay didn't you know after how many years in church must you be told to tight all this coercing that pastors coerce people no time for the word you have to coerce people god has something to say you are, you are getting the attention listen listen and then the, the song is really working for them because they would not have listened what sort of a membership is that
are we together you should have grown to the level where you have seen the value of the word of god do you know i'm surprised when i see people gisting and talking around when the word is coming it's satanic it's an attack because when the word comes it is sent the preacher may be preaching it but god is sending it the one thing satan supervises himself is the word the bad soil immediately satan not a demon he came and took the seed by himself everybody say understanding first corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 paul again is teaching us you are not growing spiritually when your understanding is not measuring up with your supposed growth it says when i was a child i speak as a child so i can know you are a child through your communication i understood as a child you can look at one of these our little ones and promise them aeroplane and first thing in the morning they come to you with confidence believing you actually will get them aeroplane that's that's how many of us understand spiritual things the devil will tell us every kind of nonsense and we still believe it although you know he can't do it and you still believe it that's that's understanding as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away including childish understanding what is your understanding like what do you know about god today there are some things the devil will never try to bring to my life with all humility i have gained understanding more than that there is no message on earth that will make me stop tithing there is, no 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 it's a persuasion this is not a denomination's perspective i adopted it's a revelation that has become spirit and life hmm. you see that there is there is no amount of revelation that will make my tomorrow less than my today no i've caught the keys it's been given to me hmm. koinonia will never never go down let me tell you it's, it's not pride there is an understanding that sponsors that position what do you understand today that gives you stability if i get a text now and someone says apostle just to let you know that tomorrow by this time you're a dead man what do i know that gives me confidence <laughs> i went to minister somewhere we're going to pray shortly i went to minister somewhere and a man who god gave them a miracle of a child there was a herbalist hey, Jimmy. The herbalist made i don't know i can't get the full import of the story but there was some incantation and the herbalist vowed that nobody can break that whatever jinx and the rest and all of a sudden i was i was in that church and i prophesied to them that they were going to have their child now when i went back to minan they, they showed me the child the child was there and the herbalist was dead i didn't kill the herbalist a mystery killed him A proud man who was taught by another ignorant man concocts a charm and claims there is no man remember people have made those kinds of stupid statements in the Bible shall these things be that even if God will open the windows of heaven ah God said me you bring me into the equation and act as if I'm, I'm one of your your rulers you will see it but you will eat of it they stamped that guy to death at the gate of where the breakthrough was Our stability in the kingdom is through our understanding I can give everything I have today and go to bed in peace because I know how it came I know how it comes I know how it will always come hmm. we can go and start koinonia anywhere that God grants us grace and this same result you see will be reproduced verbatim is based on understanding it's not luck what do you understand about God what do you understand about finances what do you understand about marriage what do you understand about the voice of god what do you understand about the anointing what do you understand about redemption don't just tell me i know mm -mm. it matters who trained your understanding there's something that you have been taught that makes satan such a big deal to you that your entire life revolves around just being careful and awareness of his presence there are things i understood about satan 
that gave me rest in my life it is true you can't be doing what i'm doing if all you have is anointing the devil will destroy you he will destroy you i assure you hallelujah if i'm sitting outside taking a fresh air and my eyes is open and i see a demon spirit pass i'm not going to say anything he didn't talk to me just, just go wherever you are toe and fro up you go i pity the spirit for seeing me because he won't be the same i don't have to pray you see that already that mission is failed for sure at least for that day at least in my presence now the light shines in darkness it didn't say it shines in the night it shines in darkness darkness is not a state it's a person the light shines in darkness the prince of darkness you cannot see the light and act like you didn't see it no. I can never pray for you and your life remains the same it's not true either the devil will attack you from that prayer or breakthrough will come you will never be the same that prayer will do something it may increase the attack in your life because the devil is agitated that you came or it can bring breakthrough or something just know that you will not be the same it's impossible I believe this I have been saying this thing for many years if I were lying about it you'll see it by now brothers and sisters I have been raised up with Christ truly I believe this it is not Kenneth Hagin's ideology it is not EW Kenyon's ideology it is the truth from Scripture far above Bishop Oyedeko will call it a far above mentality I really am above above occultic powers only God knows how many of them have my names now they will call on my name like Baal from morning till night till every year and nothing will happen what do you believe about God what do you believe about yourself I believe I will never be poor it's not the issue of okay I like money or I don't like money I can't undo it the process has been ignited it can never be undone understanding I will have to undo everything I know it's too late this I believe koinonia will never go down no it's not the issue of let's pray that it was let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters I don't mean to be arrogant believe me there is a finger holding this ministry it's not standing upon space there is a hand he upholds all things by the word of his power the right hand of God able to hold men and keep them standing when all is said and done to him be the glory standing what do you understand about your job what do you understand about favor what do you understand about prayer is God helping us these are the things that make us spiritual when I'm invited for a meeting what do I understand about myself about God about the anointing that will bless the people if you invite me for a meeting what do what do I understand do I know that I am a blessing if you know you are a blessing you are not going to meet any church member and tell him look I'm prophesying to you so 20,000 naira to my life anybody that does that is not a wise man of God is because you do not understand God let him that glory at glory in this that he understand it and knoweth me I can't claim I know everything about this God but brothers and sisters there are some things I know the more you know God the more you know yourself the only way to know yourself is in knowing him because you are a reflection of him here's what the Bible has to say the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. It says, but we all with open face, listen, beholding us in a glass, not beholding ourselves, beholding the glory. Then we are changed like the animals of Jacob and Laban kept looking at something. And the children they gave birth to were after the order of what they were looking at. The Bible says, as we behold him. All I see in my life is the glory of God. All I see in my life 
is the glory of God. Truly speaking, this is not just some nonsense confession. All I see in my life, I am an expression of the glory of God. All I see in my life, I have made my eyes single like a flint to see the glory of God. I see his faithfulness. Whatever does not work out the way I want, God is up to something. Lord, I see your glory. I see the glory of God in Koinonia. Don't allow Satan alter your perception and see the world as negative and see everything as if the whole world is coming to end. The whole world will not end by a crisis. God will end the world he started. It's not all this nonsense that people move around and say one, one thing is coming to hit the earth. It's not today. Before you were born, it's been going around the earth. There is the keeper of the earth. The earth is the Lord's. The landlord can lock his door and say it's over. It's time. Everybody say understanding. Number four. The last index to measure your spiritual growth is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. The outworkings. Listen, it has to be in this order. Your love life. Character. 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 Character understanding gain understanding understand the systems of the kingdom don't it's, it's a risk to just walk around like that and then finally the outworkings of god don't tell me you are growing and then your body cannot become a host for the glory and the power and the grace of god no the bible says to grow in grace and to also grow in the knowledge of god i must be growing in the anointing you should be able to look at my life and know that last year this was the dimension in the spirit dimension in power and anointing and authority today this is the dimension i have seen people who have not backslidden but they've not grown either they have pegged themselves at a level the grace for performance is not in their lives talkatives talking all kinds of things the semblance of power but there's nothing to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom he said the kingdom of god is not in meat and drink but in righteousness and peace and joy in the holy ghost and then he says for the kingdom of god is not in words but in power the demonstration of power i should be able to see the power of god working in your life that a sister should be able to say look um i've been in koinonia two years what's the challenge let's agree father in the name of jesus we release your power over this situation and two days later this gentleman calls and says sister I don't know you but my goodness you are powerful you said something you made an utterance and the realm of the spirit responded let me tell you when the realm of the spirit hears you you are powerful it's true you are powerful many powerless believers prayer is not just power automatically prayer connects you to God it is God that gives power prayer does not give power People move around deceiving themselves that just because they are praying, power is coming automatically. No, sir. A prayerless -less Christian is a powerless Christian because a prayerless Christian has no contact with God. And so there is no um, release of power. It is not prayer that gives power. Prayer is like a rope. It connects you and God. It is you. God is the giver of power. Many people keep depending on prayer to give power. That's why they pray forever and never get power. There is no place in scripture where prayer should give you power. It is your connection with God. Prayer connects you to God. The same way faith too. Faith in itself does not give you result. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the anointing. It is the anointing that is the system of performance in the kingdom. Because we don't know these things, we keep confusing the things around. I believe in the power of God. My life is built on it. I'm unapologetic about the power of God. When I talk of power, I'm not talking of falling down. When I'm talking of power, I'm talking of results. Results that can be reproduced. That I can bless you. I can program a climate of possibility upon your life. There is an agency in the spirit that grants men access to do that. Do you have it in your life? I know you have been falling down every week, but do you have it? Can you say the power of God is working in your life? We need power in this life, not just for warfare. A validation of the hand of God upon your life. There are men of God who are powerless. 
they just say i'm not calling to all these things i'm a slow quiet person it's a lie there's no gift of there's no ministry like that it's a lie everybody is called to be a demonstrator of the reality of god let me see the power in your life there is the power to get wealth where is it if wealth is not in your hands then the power is not there or it's not being used there is the power that brings influence there is the power that compels demons and principalities to be subject there is the power that heals the sick you don't heal the sick by desire it takes power to heal them virtue virtue went out of jesus not the apostles not the disciples changes are created by the presence of the power and the anointing of the spirit you are a blessing when you are powerful you are a blessing when you are anointed believers hear me if we truly grow in the spirit we should be powerful but look that blend of love and power on that that reminds me of the lion and the lamb dimension the lion is powerful courageous with an attitude and then the lamb sacrificial full of love you can't just be powerful alone and not have love no love should come above power character should come above power understanding should come above power if you have power without understanding it will not last and it will be misused it is understanding that coordinates the delivery the dispensing of power so that it will be it will be dispensed in accordance to god's principles i can have the gift of visions and not have understanding of the word and i can abuse that gift and destroy people power no understanding as we pray tonight i want to ask you a very serious question are these parameters working in your life can we honestly say as a family of believers that this is our experience can we say that our love life for one another and for men is ever increasing can we say we are growing in character as a corporate body are we kind are we loving can we forbear have we learned to tame our words have we learned to minister life to people or are we still priding ourselves with greek and hebrew words moving around and saying oh i gave a revelation somewhere i gave a hebrew word oh it's mimshak is is exousia is anakazo is this and, and we move and, and nod around thinking we are growing we make a fool out of ourselves though i speak with tongues of men and of angels and i have not love he says i am nothing that even though i offer my body to be burned though i have understanding of all mysteries and i have not love i have nothing i want to live my life and live my days having these four things in ever increasing measure in my life that 10 years from now you will be able to look at me and say this guy loves god and loves people more not that this guy has built several ministries he's become a global voice uh -uh. and enoch walked with god and he was not not that he built churches not an enoch wore suit he was a suit of one million and enoch walked with god and then character 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 the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit that somebody can insult you and say pastor alpha just to let you know you are the most stupid man of god i've met and you can read the text and say well it's just his opinion the lord bless you and not be under pressure to reply him back and say i curse you now jesus for you ah what manner of man jesus inspires me he truly is a mentor he's not just he's not just a father he's not just god when jesus mentors your life your life becomes a wonder you will sit in the middle of all kinds of things and just watch life like this apostle i'm suspecting you are a herbalist that's all right this is your it's your opinion where did you get your power from i've been suspecting you no problem you can suspect us that's all right a life of peace character you can see somebody that offended you come pastor and he comes to meet you and like Esau and jacob you are the first to hug him ah. and you can stand and say i love you with all my heart how is your ministry doing how is everything doing 
not that you see somebody going down and say <laughs> he insulted me the other day you will know that this 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 head has some of those things we watch people do be careful it's not proof of maturity it's proof of foolishness it's a sign that there is no growth for god so loved the world you must also love men the more you become like him the more you love men i love people you don't know how happy i am after the grace when our little children all run here and come and jump on me some of you are trying to clean my suit what is the suit let them jump they are teaching me something the day these children become afraid of you you should go for a retreat because it's a sign that there is a presence you are carrying that is pungent they don't have the kind of understanding that should ordinarily create fear something about your countenance which is a product of something in your head is translating to the fear of those kids this is how to live a useful life next time you say you are growing spiritually don't say it because they are inviting you for meetings now don't say it just because you bought a new car wonderful as it is you must take it in this order when you go back home now for you and for your loved ones take that test on a scale of one to ten what is my love life it's easy to lie that you love god but my neighbor my friends my people my roommate my nasty unbelieving roommate my fellow person in the department here as a worker do i love to see the good in others or do i rejoice when i destroy others where i'm tearing other people down do i derive fulfillment from it then you must go to god and then character can i say i'm a man of character can i say i'm a woman of character can i say i'm a man of character anointing takes you up character keeps you there there are people who don't have character that's why they went they will go to a man's church and tear down the people look for all the wealthy people seated in front in the church and organize a special meeting and ask them for money and ask them for whatever it is prophecy and you give money no character it's because a man of god does not have character that you go and bring another pastor to come and raise money for him and you are manipulating people and they are giving their all not willingly you know they will not be blessed and the man is there when they finish they will now share it and pray over the money and lie that let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom number three understanding and number four the outworkings of the power of god if this is working in your life these four things and in ever increasing measure then please give yourself rest you are growing it doesn't matter which prophet comes to meet you and say jimmy i saw something two weeks ago you are not growing please tear that paper and throw it away and say thank you jesus i'm growing in love i'm growing in character because you have to be careful there are all kinds of people who will come to you day and night manipulating your understanding about spiritual things you know how many visions and dreams i've gotten in my life all kinds of things there was a time i was sawing in the spirit so powerfully and then came this five or six useless page text message by whoever i can't remember i think we're organizing all kinds of things i said i should be careful what i am teaching something about what i'm teaching i just deleted it i said go away please it's when you don't know god that i'm not saying you should be cynical there are times that god can use people to caution you not that people just carry their ignorance crying for relevance and come and confuse your consistency with god and you go back feeling bad you are loving god someone just says i have a dream oh and in that dream i saw you you were standing like a madman by the roadside and you are believing that nonsense i reject it madman doing what by which roadside i am hidden in christ and Christ in God it may not be so for all of us but that's what I believe sometimes you may be the one who even had that dream yourself and you got up and say me naked in my secondary school I'm wearing pajamas shirt no trouser and I'm sitting in my secondary school 
it's a revelation of an attack in your life so what do you do as a believer enforce your victory don't complain don't send the text to head of department prayer uh, jimmy and do you know it's amazing how people the the same thing they tell you they tell him they tell every man of god does anybody they know and they say at least i know that up to 10 people are praying for me then they go to bed laziness you get up and say in the name of jesus the spirit that wants to cause delay you saw yourself in an old building your former house satan you are a liar the bible says the part of the just not i want to move forward that's not prayer it is written that's the basis of your prayer the spirit that keeps me down i take authority over you i am risen with christ i decree and declare that no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper i have been called out of every tribe and tongue this is the believer walking your salvation with fear and trembling there is no level you get to that you stop doing this thing i'm saying you are too big to do it you'll be too big to rise are we together now people send me text messages apostle i saw you having a plane crash i just sit down in the name of jesus not me no way uh, mm -mm. The plane was made of metals. The metals were in the earth. I was given dominion over the earth. It didn't say I'm given dominion when I'm walking on land. I was given dominion. I don't just say I will arrive safely. That's not enough for me. I need to know the basis of arriving safely. Except that plane was made of smoke. If it was made of metals and I am above it, he that cometh from above is above all. If it will crash, I will not enter it. But if I enter it, is God that is in charge of that plane it's not a generic belief it's mine it's my understanding I don't believe there is any mortal man born of a woman on earth that can kill me I don't believe I will eat poison and die I don't believe it it's only in heaven that will tell how many times I've eaten it I won't die oh no no I will not pray for people carrying communicable diseases and after 10 years they now check my system and find and find out that while i was praying for one the thing entered me i better go back and flog it out with god and pray on a handkerchief and say everybody come and touch it but if god tells me lay hands i must find out there has to be something in my life If Satan talks to me, I will talk back to him. If I hear God, I should be able to hear Satan. I'm not afraid of hearing a voice. If Satan talks to me, I know he's the one. Oh, Satan, this is you. It is written. I shall not fail. It is written. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. It is written. I don't, ah, Satan, how did you get to my room? That's a foolish question. Satan came to Jesus. In terms of oppression, let them go. But in terms of uh, maybe Satan coming, let me tell you, it is possible that the higher you are growing, one day you will see him. Satan, real, not a demon. If you see him, nothing should scare you. He is Satan. There is a gulf between two of you, light and darkness. Just that your eyes see you close does not mean that's all there is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He shall keep his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest thou dash your feet against the stone. That's what the Bible says, that for us, the mountains surround Jerusalem. Right? So God has surrounded us. That's how I live my life. Are you ready to pray tonight? Can you say you are growing spiritually? For some of you, no. For some of you, no. And we are going to pray. Some of you are even leading groups prayer groups but you are not growing spiritually some of you are pastoring churches but you are not growing spiritually some of you are leaders of christian organizations you are not growing spiritually rise up on your feet and let's pray some of you have every man of god's message you listen to five messages per day and you convince yourself that just because you are listening to it you are growing no sir no sir lift your voice and thank the lord for what you have just heard tonight growth growth thank him lord we are here to grow we are here to grow tonight you have given us understanding tonight you have opened up the truth of your word to us we want to be matured believers 
not just church goers not just koinonia followers not just pentecostals not just christians we want to grow grounded and rooted in the truth make sure you are praying lift your voice and pray Shagata barakato si ala bakanda bredis kaliada. Shagade baruka sada bariada baladabash. Lord, we want to get our priorities right, based on the revelation of the truth that you have revealed to us. We do not want to live our lives in flattery, deceiving ourselves, comparing ourselves with ourselves, getting the accolades of men and not growing by your standard. Hallelujah. We are going to pray four quick prayer points. Number one, Lord, let the love of God in me and let the love of God express towards my fellow men. Let it grow in ever increasing measure in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of hatred, a wicked and a bitter spirit, the spirit that rejoices over the downfall of others, the spirit that makes me a naysayer, the spirit that makes me a sadist, I rejoice when people go down. I rejoice when things are not working well in their lives. I come again that, against that spirit. I declare that my love life is intact. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not only a lover of your presence. I'm not only a lover of your word. I'm a lover of your people. I love men. I love men. They are your highest creation. I love men. I love the brethren. I love the people of God. I love my fellow brothers and sisters. I will never be part of the destruction of anyone called by the name of the Lord. Pray. I love every ministry. I love every church. I love every Christian organization. I love and honor every man of God. I love with all my heart the love of God is richly richly at work in me in ever increasing measure hatred cannot be part of my life malice cannot be part of my life a divisive spirit can never be part of my life my love is communicated through words my love is communicated in sacrifice communicated in giving hallelujah Number two, you're going to cry and say, Lord, make me a man of character, a woman of character. Leave understanding, leave anointing, we're coming there. But cry and say, Lord, edit my life. Give me stability. Let me not destroy my opportunities because of lack of character. Lift your voice and pray. Character. And if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man. Teach me how to talk. Let the fruit of the Spirit take away the attributes of the flesh. Let the fruit of the Spirit be richly at work in me. Let me not sit down and conceive wickedness in my heart. Character. 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 Hallelujah. Number three. You're going to say, Lord, open my understanding and increase my comprehension of the truth. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I don't want to be attending Koinonia week in, week out. Attending church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday attending departmental meetings yet i'm not growing lord open my understanding let me have an exact comprehension of truth the truth that brings me to a point of victory lord give me the truth that works that will lift me up that will make me mighty exousia dominion authority on the strength of truth pray stability in my life grant unto me truth open my eyes take away fear from my life let truth give me stability 
Let truth give me prosperity. Let truth give me influence. Let truth keep me away from fear. The fear of death. The fear of oppression. I cry for understanding, illumination, light, understanding, passion for the word, passion for the word. Open down my eyes that I may behold one lost things. Teach me something about Satan that gives me victory. Lord, teach me something about yourself. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of revelation. I receive of your ministry. The last prayer point lord make me powerful listen you have to pray this prayer i'm tired of a powerless christian life no anointing no result your words are empty you touch somebody's head no blessing nothing about your life is worth attracting people no no you cook food and people eat it no anointing you bless people you call someone somebody sows into your life and never receives any harvest lord bring genuine power to my life lift your voice and pray lord we receive power we contend for real authentic spiritual power 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 that produces undeniable results power to heal the sick power to cleanse the lepers in the name of Jesus power to speak into the lives of men power to change their situations power to enforce growth power to enforce prosperity power to save the lost that we become demonstrators of the reality of the life of Jesus Pray. send power to my family send genuine power to my church not just falling down and standing up authentic power that produces results authentic power where your words become like the word of God where your communications are greatly desired because your speakings bring life to men hallelujah can i add just one more prayer lord bring the power to prosper in my life the power to prosper is not just about money it's the grace that makes things work it's called the power to prosper the power if all you get from the power to prosper is money you have shortchanged that power the power to prosper is the power of performance there is a grace that makes things work lift your voice and cry lord bring this power to my life the power to prosper the power to prosper hey. the power to prosper the power to prosper the power to prosper shake it like a the power to prosper the power to prosper ever increasing prosperity everything working the lines falling for me in pleasant places having a goodly heritage the power to prosper always working for my good the power to prosper When the power to prosper comes upon you in two weeks what will happen in your life will surprise you you will see things that have been locked up in the realm of the spirit manifesting the power to prosper it is god that gives it hallelujah i'm going to make an altar call now please stand everybody please no movement i want us to develop a culture of respecting souls are we together now 
most churches don't teach they take altar call but they don't teach members to respect it as a priceless miracle the next time you ever see one person coming to jesus christ please respect it not only celebrate them celebrate it remember jesus died for men are we together when you hear that someone's genotype was changed you clap you stand up you yell but when we say someone's life is about to change the foundation for true change is that someone meets jesus you don't know what their conditions are i'm about to make an altar call right now any of the overflows one two three and those following online listen you must be born again it's not a religious initiation it is the only way the only way to encounter jesus the only way to begin to make meaning out of your life the bible says for god so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever that includes you that if you believe in him you will have so way his life that divine life a life that is characterized by victory wherever you are you have been coming to church you have a christian name you have never given your life to jesus or you are in the second category you've given your heart to the lord but your ways are not right with god and you're saying apostle haven't heard you tonight i'm not only not growing but i don't even think that i'm, I'm retrogressing but tonight as you are making this call i want to run to jesus unashamedly whether you are in overflow one two three for those at overflow three for time for the sake of distance you can just walk to the front of your projector screen but for overflow one and two and those in here please make your way quickly you belong to any of these two categories while we are clapping for you please very quickly we have just a minute or two wherever you are god bless you someone has to be coming someone has to be coming to jesus wherever you are don't allow anyone stop you. This is the beginning of a life of grace and victory. Koinonia, celebrate them. They are coming by the Spirit. God bless you. God bless you for the courage. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus is truly the answer for your life. God bless you, sir. They are coming. Are you clapping for them? Coming from everywhere. We are saying, man of God, I want to start afresh with Jesus. This is a family that loves you. We will never condemn you. There is always a new beginning for you. Make your way to the front. Quickly, make your way to the front. I perceive that someone is still thinking about it and is saying, Apostle, I'm not sure if I should come. If you are not sure, make your way quickly. Join them. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. Join them very quickly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord listen gentlemen and ladies i salute you you don't come out to receive an award as though you are going into a prison cell the way people come out to receive salvation sometimes of course i understand sometimes you, it can be a very emotional um, thing but but many times you know people are ashamed who is looking at me what you are receiving is greater than any check what you are receiving is greater than a degree is greater than a certificate is greater than whatever it is so i want you to be very intentional some of you are rededicating your life some for the first time doesn't matter what category just lift with me your right hands please and just say this after me say lord jesus mean it from your heart overflow three those online please follow say lord jesus i love you thank you for loving me tonight i have heard your word i want to love you and live for you and grow therefore I receive Jesus into my heart I declare you the Lord of my life I declare that you are my Savior I accept the gift of righteousness I accept your love I accept your forgiveness from tonight I declare that I'm a new creation your life is in me victory is mine in the name of Jesus Keep your hands lifted lord i thank you for these precious precious people that you died for they have made these declarations and lord according to the integrity of your word i declare their sins forgiven in the name of jesus i pray that tonight begins to be for you the best days of your life the lord himself will keep you in the fold he will guide your life and he will make you a sign and a wonder i decree and declare that every legal access that the devil has over your life 
is hereby broken now and forever in the name of Jesus I welcome you into the greatest family the family of God in the name of Jesus thank you very much now please follow the lady waving her hands all of you this way just follow the lady they will lead you somewhere and communicate some more for you please let's appreciate them